What up? What up? It's Tuesday night. It's 8 30. Well, 8 35, but semantics. You know what it is. Hockey happy hour coming at you now. We got a lot to talk about, a lot to unpack from this afternoon. A lot of trades going down. Is our trade deadline special? We're going to talk options for the Flyers. We're going to review some of the big ones that went down this afternoon, including Mr. Patrick Kane heading to the New York Rangers. We'll break all that down. And then we're going to talk about some other stuff going on with the Flyers as well. So stay tuned. Let's go hit that like, hit that subscribe. It's time to talk some puck. Let's do it. Oh, come in. It's almost time. New edition of the Hockey Happy Hour. We are live on A2DRadio.com. I am Matt Sinsuti along with the Dark Wind. Mr. Broadway, Brad Ryer, who got to be as happy as a pig in shit after this trade deadline. We welcome a new edition of the Hockey Happy Hour right here by Physical Therapy with the doc. Dr. Paul Vidal. If you have any aches and pains that have popped up, whether it be through work, through some other strenuous activity, the doc will help you. You won't have any more of those fingers. You won't have, won't have any more pains. Make an appointment at www.specializedphysicaltherapy.com. Go see him at Berlin. Take yeah. you. They'll make sure that you feel as good as new. And brought to you by Abagio's Bread in the Mount Laurel area. If you are uh, having a big get together or whatnot for a birthday or for some other type of celebration, maybe family for St. Patrick's Day up this month in March. That'll be here soon enough. And uh, yeah, maybe you want to have your friends over and, uh, you know, Drink up and enjoy the time. You also want some nice Baggio's bread, which they've got the best sandwiches, cutlets, and meatballs. And for off of your in-store purchase and get yourself some great food from Baggio's bread. All right, then. And tonight's poll question for everyone to give their thoughts and their feelings on is the Flyers will be active at the trade deadline. They've really only made one move and it's a very minor move, but who agrees agrees. Will the Flyers be more active before Friday comes and goes and the trade deadline has officially ended? We got to remember Maddie, all, all blizzards start opinion. with a flurry. That's tr true, true. That is very, very true. What about you, Brad? How are you feeling on that one? Blizzard coming? I think so. I think so. I think they, the Flyers have got to start. Have got to start realizing that they've got to completely tear it down now. I mean, it, it's gotten it's gotten to a point that it's gotten to a point they need to they need to bring to get some draft choices. They need to to really build up this farm system. And uh, get younger. I mean, it, it, it has to happen. It, it's inevitable. Uh, whether uh, I think you're definitely going to see Van Riemsdyk go. Uh, Provorov, I would say, is is fifty fifty. Uh, some of the other guys, I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't heard a lot of interest in other players, but you know that that kind of stuff just kind of heats up on the last day of the trade deadline. So, I, without really knowing when what the injury situation is for some of the Flyers. Uh, I, I keep, couldn't say whether or not, you know, guys like, uh, you know, guys like uh, Cam Atkinson, uh, you know, a guy like that could be traded. Uh, he might be if he if he's able to come back this year. Uh, certainly there somebody's got to be talking about Kevin Hayes. I've heard some some chatter about him. Uh, 
you know, as far as anybody else, I don't think any, I don't see anybody else really all that available right now. Felix Sandstrom, I don't think anybody's going to want him except for minor league depth. So, you know, I, I know that he, people have been talking about him. He's more minor league depth than anything else right now. So I don't know what you really could get for him. But, uh, yeah, I think the Flyers are going to definitely try to make some moves. I think they're going to try to improve their team now as well as for the future if, if it makes sense. You know, if, if they've got team control beyond this year, like say for next year, it wouldn't be a bad thing for them to bring somebody here, get them familiar with the uh, with the city, and, and and try to get try to build this team up because they really need to now. Yes. Yeah, so interesting to see how the uh, Flyers continue forward with this. Like we said, they've only really made one move, and it was very much a dead. That's just cliff to the next for future considerations. What those considerations are, we'll see. Um, but Isaac Ratcliffe was a guy who, you know, he, he was, was a prop. I mean, maybe he can in Nashville. Maybe he won't. Either way, I don't think it's the biggest loss in the world for the Flyers. They kind of gone from him, and we'll see how he does in Nashville. Good luck to him there, and uh, we'll see what – Future considerations in Nashville is throwing at us. Or Chuck Fletcher. It's the only move he's made so far. Um, we got, got Swoopy here. Jake Friel earlier on saying, what's up, boys? I agree with the poll. However, they're going to be sellers. And then uh, we also had Priz saying, let's go. What's up, Priz? How you doing, brother? Joe M. Soma Kawaj. And uh, honestly, I was in that ballpark at the beginning. And, um, and he also said, and it's true, most of the NHL doesn't have a strip. Oh, the reason why the Flyers haven't really gotten any of those major um, deals done. Uh, uh, seem interest in what the Flyers are offering. Do you agree with that assessment, gentlemen? Do you feel like true that the Flyers don't have anything tempting to offer these other teams? Brian, how do you feel about that? Do you feel that that's true, or do you feel like there is some – value and trade no i mean i i totally disagree i think there's definitely some appealing pieces on this roster that could definitely have some value moving forward you know kevin hayes is having a really strong year and i've heard three teams linked to him and the flyers are willing to retain the salary on him to make a move happen um i mean are they going to make a ton of moves probably not but you know, there's interest. There was interest in Ivan Provorov earlier in the year. I don't know if they're still set on trying to move him or not. I haven't heard much on Provorov. Um, the three names that I've heard the most of is Justin Braun, JVR, who I've heard has been very linked to Minnesota, and um, Kevin Hayes. You know, those are the three big ones. And, you know, if you can get Hayes and, and JVR off your books – you're freeing up a lot of money there and that gives you a little bit more leeway going into free agency and the draft to, to be able to possibly throw some money around at some free agents to fill holes. But um, I don't think that's something that they should do. Uh, but I mean, you never know. There's always a sleeper move on, under the radar coming and maybe it's a Joel Farabee. Maybe it's TK um, to Brad's point earlier. It's probably not going to be Cam Atkinson because he won't be back this year. Um, he's, he's already said that he's done for the year. And then, you know, I mean, you never know. I mean, there's definitely some appealing pieces here. It's, it's what is Chuck Fletcher willing to deal? That's the big question. You know, he said earlier in his press conference, it's sell, sell, sell. So let's just, you know, we're going <laughs> to, we have no choice but to sit back and see what he does. Um, but just don't be surprised to see, you know, J JVR, maybe in Minnesota, Kevin Hayes maybe to Carolina because they could use some help up to up the middle and oh god that would be awful. It's a it's possible it's possible. I, I, I mean no that would be that would be awful if you're a Ranger fan to see him on Carolina. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, I don't. Well, want to I see mean, it. is it? I mean, is it though? I mean, I'd be. I'm more concerned about the Devils having Timo Meyer now than I would be about the the Carolina Hurricanes picking up, picking up another. I. I well, Carolina I can't score. That's that's Carolina's problem. Right. I mean, they're going through a very serious cold spell right now, and their their power play has not been good. No, they, they, they really can't score. So against a, a team that can score a lot of goals, they, they're just not they're not gonna outscore anybody. They're real no, good they can defensively. Play defense. They're very huh? good defensively. Oh yeah, oh absolutely. But the thing is if you take a look at their record against both the Rangers and the Devils, they got their brains beat in this year. So I, I don't know that I don't know that, that team can unless they if they get a Kevin Hayes, yeah, that would definitely make a big difference. Oh, for sure. Uh, I, I, that that would really help, and if the Flyers are willing to to do something, I mean, you know, they could they could definitely get a few draft picks from him. From him, I mean, look at the Tanner Genero trade. Okay, the most ridiculous trade I've ever seen, probably in my entire fandom of hockey. A first, second, third, fourth, and fifth for Tanner Genero. Uh, is it me, guys, or are they? Or as Tampa Bay. Totally, uh, t- totally. You know, did somebody smoke a, a vial of crack down there or what? Because that, if if you if you're going to trade that much for that for for Tanner mm. Genero, what would Kevin Hayes get if the Flyers took fifty percent of his salary for the next th- two three years? Okay, so so just, just, I'm just the thing is I've been watching hockey. You've been watching hockey since the since the seventies, right? Uh, question that I have to ask: Are is that truly the most ridiculous trade you've ever seen in the NHL? Come on, there right, had maybe. to be something far more ridiculous. Yeah, all right, all right, that. but but in the last, all right, let's say in the last five years, <laughs> that may be that may be, that may be the, the. I mean, uh, all right. So uh, I'm looking at it that way. If if he gets if they can get that much, and I'm talking about Nashville for for a goon that that, that scored what six goals this year. I, I know we had a good year a couple of years ago, but that was two years ago. <laughs> I mean, then what? Uh, Kevin Hayes actually can score goals and he can assist. He he's a very good player. He's just overpaid. But if the Flyers eat half his salary for like the next two, three years, okay, while the Flyers are rebuilding and, and uh, getting themselves back into becoming a playoff team again, uh, there's there, there's no reason to think they can't get, they can't really load up on draft picks. I mean, keep in mind, too, with this deal, Brad, they're getting Cal Foot in return, and everything that was a lower-level pick – is this year everything else is deeper into the draft so or deeper into the uh, next couple seasons. So the first round pick they got was uh, 2025. The second round pick was 2024. Everything else was 2023. And you also have to remember this. They have intentions on signing this dude long term and they have, you know, he's 25 years old. He still has a lot of time left in this league to to kind of redo what he did last year. So no, that the was two years really, ago. He wasn't. He it's wasn't not that good crazy. Last. He wasn't good last year. All he did was fight last year. He was good. He was good two years ago. Last year, all he did was fight. And this year, it's basically the same thing. So you're trading all. I mean, you could have gotten Ryan Reeves for that for a lot less. Uh, I, I, just Ryan saying, Reeves I mean, has a scoring upside that he does, though. No, true. I, I understand that, and I know he did. What did he scores like twenty six goals two years ago. Uh, twenty four. 24, okay. 24 so, last year. Oh, he scored 24 last year? I thought it was, it was 24 years last year. Okay. Well, this year, uh, you know, he's not been all that good. And it, you can't blame it all on Nashville not being a good team either because he's had a lot to do with that. So I, five draft picks for, for a guy like that. I mean, yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's an investment move more than it is anything. And, and we all know Tampa Bay doesn't really – they don't build through the draft anyway. They've been building through free agency the last couple of years. So for them to give up these draft picks, I'm not really all that surprised. And again, the investment is more down the line where they're giving up 25, 2025, it's two years from now, and 2024 yeah, but high 20, picks. But, but, 20, but 2025, they're probably not going to be good anymore. 
That's a risky take making a move like that. I know, no, I know. I'm just I'm just saying, I mean, they're they're not Tampa Bay is not a young team anymore. Um, how long do you think that they're 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 gonna be that competitive? So probably I mean, another I, year I, or two. I thought that was a great trade for Nashville. I I, I just no, absolutely it, is. Have all yeah, that yeah. draft equity, you know, if if Nashville can make the right moves uh next, you know, in the off season and next, you know, next off season. Uh, you know, and to get to have all that draft capital, just think what what kind of uh, deals they could make in the trade deadline with all that uh, with all that draft capital. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then you even know. say they, you know, with the Isaac Ratcliffe move, you know, they have capital now that they can be like, okay, things went well with Ratcliffe here. Let me slide you this pick here because now they have it. Uh, they even got. Exactly. I believe they got a few draft picks too in the um, Ekholm deal with Edmonton. Um, yeah, they, they got, they, they got this year and a, and a fourth in 2024. Wow! Did they get that much? Mm-hmm. Wow! Yeah. Well, they got they they got they also got Tyson Barry and Reed Schaefer. Yeah. They, no, the Oilers. Yeah, the Oilers traded uh, Tyson Barry, Reed Schaefer, a 23. First rounder and a fourth rounder. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Ekholm's good. Ekholm's a little oh, bit older I know than, than I Janelle know. is, but you know, I know he is. You just David Pulley is he's he's making his mark before he leaves. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that, but I do think the Flyers are going to are, are going to try to make. I think Chuck Fletcher will try to make as many moves to get to get uh, draft assets. As he possibly can. I mean, you got TK out for the year. Coots is probably out for the year. Cam's out for the year. All your big guns are are, are down. Give so, up on the season. I'm not saying tank, but give up on the season. Get back to work. Get back to playing the not, game it's right. Not tanking to, it's not tanking to build up draft assets at the trade deadline. No, not at all. Tanking, I'm not saying it that tanking, way. I'm, what I'm saying is bring up you the do that. It's only tanking if you do that in the off season. No, I'm and saying I'm saying allow, gonna... allow the young guys to come up, see what you have. Oh yeah, you, know, that you actually have a, a couple open roster spots. Rotate some guys in and out, see what you have, and then you know get these guys back to playing the game right and just see what happens. Don't worry about wins and losses. This season was never about that anyway. It shouldn't have been about that anyway. But... I, I agree. I agree. I, I but I do I do think that they've got some tradable assets. On All this right. Team. Agreed. Um, the Tanner Janot that you guys were talking about, Tampa Bay acquiring forward Tanner Janot from the National Predators in exchange for the 2025 NHL draft, a second round pick in the 2024 NHL draft, and the, the third NHL draft. So that's the overview of the whole trade, in case anyone was confused at all during the conversation. All right. And Forever, as well as John jumping in as well, saying, Chuck, you mofo, sell, sell, Brian, boy. Johnny boy. And Ellen also saying as well, uh, hope everyone's doing well. We're doing fine, Eileen. Hope you're doing well. And she also says, I agree to the poll. And uh, John also says, I agree. They need to sell to get dressed in cap space and a couple of other ones. Joe earlier on did say that that trade was we should know trade. And Swoopy uh, had an interesting thing to say. He said that Kane is not a good fit for the New Yorkers. To you, um, would you please elaborate that? We go any further than that. I mean, I mean, they're immediately. He didn't on go any there. further on elaboration, uh, except for this. He says just because he's a famous name doesn't mean he's a good fit. He also goes on to say that he would have been better for Toronto. But before we dive in, before I toss that off to you there, Brad, let me just pull up the trade here so that way everybody can get an idea of how that went down and uh, what went 
what whatever take a look at it i'm sure they already have and i'm sure they've already made their assessment of the situation but we do want to give out the information to the fans so pull up that trade here for you guys before i send it off to brad so he can make his comment and uh yeah i'm going to assume you're not going to agree with swoop I mean, I don't you, even agree with Swoopy. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I mean, before Brad jumps in here and takes over, so um, all I'm going to say is, how 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 can he say that they need a score? They don't need a score. The Rangers have plenty of scores. Toronto has plenty of scores. They need playmakers. They need guys. Are you, are you really going to sit here and say that Kane and Panarin reunited isn't going to be a great for the Rangers? I I can tell you that. You look at how good they were together in Chicago. They were they were disgusting together, and they're going to be disgusting in New York because Gallant is not just a great coach, but he has a great offensive system that most guys are going to succeed in. Toronto, if he went to Toronto, yeah, he would probably be a good fit. But if you look, if you really think about it, most of the guys on the Toronto roster are playmakers. They're not scores. They don't. They need scores. Austin Matthews is their only real score. Tavares, playmaker. Mitch Marner, playmaker. Nylander, playmaker. I mean, let's let's and, and to be real, the Rangers are the best chance for Kane to win anyway. Toronto's gonna Toronto needs defense, and they went out and got a lot of defense today. And there's still gonna be a first round exit, just like Edmonton's going to after they picked up their defenseman. Um Kane's gonna be fine in New York. He's gonna be just fine. Brad. Okay, first of all, take a look at what the Rangers gave up for him. Okay, seriously, they, they didn't give up any uh, major assets for him over the next two years. Okay, I'm not talking about this season and next season. Now, yeah, they, they're going to get banged a little bit in 2025 when they, if, when they have to give up a first-round draft choice if, in fact, they get to the conference finals. Okay, but as the trade stands now, it's a second and a fourth. Uh, to the uh, to the Blackhawks, and I believe a third. You said to uh, the Coyotes. So you're talking about Patrick Kane, who was, as you said, uh, with with Artemi Panarin was was just ridiculous when they played together uh, with the Blackhawks. Also, Vinny Trocheck has been unbelievable the last uh, three weeks. Uh, this is a guy that's really turned around his season. He's got he's up to 19 goals now, and I think he has almost 40 points. So I don't know that uh, I don't know that how that could be possibly a bad trade. Uh, Meyer never would have been Meyer would have been a great fit, yeah. But how are you going to uh, how are you going to trade all your first all your all your draft picks for him? and your top uh, and your you have to Ryan. I I see what you're saying. Okay, I get it, but what the Sharks wanted from the Rangers was basically uh, their firstborn, and the Rangers weren't going to do that. Okay, the Rangers still had all their top prospects, uh, and and the whole point is they were able to basically fleece the, the Blackhawks for Patrick Kane. Now, if you think that it's a bad move, look at it this way. Okay, first line is Panarin, Kane, and Trocheck. Second line, Chris Kreider, Mika Zibanejad, and T and Tarasenko. Third line is the kid line. That's a pretty darn good line. Those are three pretty good offensive lines. And your fourth line, okay, you don't have big bangers, but you do have Goudreau, who's gonna smack, who's gonna whack people around. Uh, VC, who's a very good penalty killer and a good dependable defensive player, and uh, Tyler Mott, who's the same way. He's a good penalty killer, good defensive player. And uh, these guys also combined have scored around 22, 23 goals this season, which for a fourth line, not bad. Okay. So, you know, it's not just the fact that they were able to get Kane. It's that they can move guys into their proper roles. And they're gonna, the Rangers are going to be a very tough out. I, I, I think the Rangers can get to the uh, conference finals. I think they could win the cup if, if Igor Shesterkin uh, turns it around a little bit and starts raising his level of play. I, I, I think the Rangers could win the Stanley Cup. I mean, I, I don't know. I threw 10, 10 bucks on them at 14 to 1 a few weeks ago to win the cup. Uh, I, I feel real good about that bet now. Uh, flip it, by the way. Um, flip your lines. They're, they're going to be 
the other way around. You got the players right. You just the first line is going to be um, Kreider, Zabatajad, and um, Tarasenko. Tarasenko. Second line is going to be Panera and Trocheck and Kane. Okay. Either way, uh, you got I the mean, lines right. It's just a different I don't order. Know. That's all. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they're gonna what they're whether they're gonna do that or not. I, I'm thinking they may change change things around. But does it really matter? Those two those two lines are one A and one B. Yeah. I mean, yeah, not, yeah. not too many, not too many teams. I can't think of any teams that have that have lines that go three deep like that. They can all score, you know. They have guys that are guys that are le- are legitimate goal scorers. I mean, the Rangers' third line has Philip Hedl on it. He's got 19 goals, you know. And and uh, you know, at, at this point, Kako's playing a lot better. Uh, Lafreniere starting to put the puck in the net again. And uh, that that line is just going to keep getting better, and that's a third line. How many teams can throw a good team, a good third line out there to stop those guys? I mean, they could be dominant now. Can't stop all three lines. It's very hard to stop a three line team. Well, the, here's the fun part. We still have, I guess you can call it two more days, three more days. Yep. And just today has been crazy. And we still have about three days left of this. So there's going to be a lot going on over the next few days, and a lot of things could change. Right now, the Rangers look like they are the Stanley Cup guys. They look like they are the guys that are pretty much cemented to make the finals. I, well, I let's like see what everybody chance. else does, I like too. I like, I like their chances. I mean, Boston went and got some more muscle. And, you know, that's kind of their, that's their game. But really, offensively, They've always kind of been a one-line team, and I don't know what's going on with Taylor Hall. Is he going to be able to play? Uh, I haven't heard anything on Taylor Hall. I heard he got hurt, and I also heard Marchant got a skate cut the other day. Mm, Marchant will probably be good to go after some stitches. Uh, yeah, I don't know how. I don't know how serious. I don't know how serious it was. I, I heard he got he got he got cut by a skate, and. Uh, you know, Taylor Hall got hurt too, so I don't know what the deal is with that. Skate should have cut but, his uh, tongue off. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I, I can't be I can't be talking about that. Not after what my uh, my boy K. Andre Miller did the other day. That was disgraceful. He, he, you know, he's lucky he doesn't get kicked out of the league for doing that for spitting on the Dowdy. Awful. Wow. Yeah, completely. Um, as a cold. fan, as a as a Ranger fan, I was embarrassed. That's definitely not unsportsmanlike. I don't no. think anything with Taylor Hall is serious. He got suspended for three games, and you know what? He should have gotten um, suspended more because that's really a pathetic move. Day to day is is Taylor Hall. That's what uh, Jim Montgomery was saying. Who's, who's okay. really high okay. on um, everyone who's really high on Boston. You know, I I get. And they are killing it. No one can deny that. But I'm going to say this again, man. You know, regular season and play, I'm, I'll believe it when I see it. If Boston gets to the Stanley Cup Finals, okay, that then they've proven that. But I will say this. You still got to get to the Stanley Cup Finals. You win what? You got to win how many games to get to? To the finals to just to get on at the same time you have to get you're gonna you face to get, three to tough 12 teams wins. you need 12 you need 12 wins and they're gonna have to beat they're gonna have to beat either toronto or uh, tampa bay right probably tampa bay because no matter what toronto does they're still gonna lose i mean all the guys they got i mean everybody's making like they've they've gotten so who do they get really that 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 scares you Ryan O'Reilly is, is an old man, and he really hasn't done shit in two years now. <laughs> uh, I mean, no, really. What, what has he really done in the uh, last couple of years? I mean, you he's know, had he's a hat trick in his first games with Toronto. I mean, honestly. Yeah. Okay. okay, but is he going to real? But you really think he's going to well, be a big that's factor in the he playoffs? Feels like he has a shot. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Maybe, but you yes. know, he definitely spit the this will. year. And it, it will was, that change? He, he, will that be? Will he be? Will him? Will he be the one to be able to get them past Tampa Bay? I don't think so. Him alone, no. No. But his no, leadership and his well, experience—that's is... that's up in the air. And they got they got the 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 uh, 
the NHL parking cone, official parking cone of the NHL, and uh, we all know who that is, Luke Shen, who's now playing on since, – since the Flyers got rid of him, he's yes, played on about really 50 different teams now. Decision. So – I, but I he has won a Stanley Cup, so it's more yes, he has. than any. So. I don't know. You know, Toronto's made a lot of moves. I they they seem to have got tried to. They're trying to get tougher. Uh, Tampa Bay got tougher already. You know, now that they got Genero, not not. I still don't think that was a good trade, but Genero is definitely going to make them tougher for sure. I mean that. There's no argument there. Brad, I don't know what annoys me more, your love for New York sports or the fact that you have a perfect head of hair. <laughs> well I'm said, sorry. John. Uh, yeah, you know, what can I say? It, it was a good hair day today. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> you, you put in that, that volume yesterday. That's what the I reason why I wear a hat every week. <laughs> It is great, though, you know, in case you didn't notice, it's not black anymore. I'll, listen, for a head of hair like that, I will take gray hair. I don't care. Here's okay. the reason I wear a hat every week. I'm uh, trying well, to hide I, something. Uh, oh, I, well, I, I, I wear a hat a lot because just because I, I think I'm so cool when I'm wearing a hat. But, you know, I, I, we all know better. But, you know, I can fool some people once in a while. <laughs> Spook is saying, by the Ryan, way, I was Ryan messing the entire saying, time. Kane is a tremendous fit. Well, I didn't overreact. I just wanted but, to hear. I just think that he's per he's perfect for that team right now. I mean, listen, I wouldn't mind. If, I would have liked to have gotten Max Domi, you know, for the fourth line, for a fourth line center. But, you know, you, you can't have everybody. There is a, some, there's something called a salary cap, so you can't get everybody. Yeah, that's. Speaking of Max Domi, he's another one that's uh, he, he's one. What Anthony's saying with even I guess making moves. Yeah. 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 I mean, everybody's gonna. Uh, the next couple of days is gonna be crazy if today's any has any lead into what the direct trade deadline is gonna look like on Friday. So it's gonna it's gonna get crazy, um, and we're gonna see a lot of movement. Yeah, and I, I think your flyers are gonna be. Making quite a few moves, to be honest with you. I think they're. I think, I think they're going to do as much as possible to try to get as many draft assets as they can, open up as much salary cap space as they can. Uh, this is a very, very good uh, free agent class as of right now. And keep in mind, yeah, the Devils did get Timo Meyer, and boy, they're going to be tough to beat for the Rangers in the first round. But they haven't signed him yet. Nope, not yet. No, I mean he's got he's got a uh, ten ten billion dollar qualifying offer. I you know I don't know what makes everybody think that it's a lock that they're going to be able to sign him. The Devils are not uh, are not one of those teams that goes all the way up to the cap every year. There's a salary cap and then there's a Devils cap. They don't they're not um, one of those teams that can go right up to the cap. No, but I think they're going to have to at some point. Well, yeah, they got the, some there really is good young talent. Consider well, they also have it. to pay. They're also going to have to pay Nico Hershier. They're going to have right. to pay uh, Jack Hughes. But, I mean, how much? How much? How much money is there to go around? They've already put a lot point, of money yeah. into. Uh, they, they paid all that money for Dougie Hamilton. You know, uh, seriously, they, how much money do they? You think they're going to have to be able to pay all these guys? Well, I mean, Hershier and Hughes are already on their contracts, so. You don't have Are to really they? worry about those two. Oh yeah, I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah. Um. And then um, I think there, there's a couple. Guys I forgot I how about. long. Benny. Long. Hershey's yeah. been in the league. Yeah. Yeah, they've been yeah, in a I, lot. I forgot that too. Yeah, he's a. Uh, there's a couple guys. But there are gonna, still um, young players to take that into consideration. Well, I mean, you got guys like got guys like Saren Govich, who who who's really good. Who he's going to get? He's going to get paid. You know, and there's some other guys on that team that are, that are going to get paid too. Uh, I'm just wondering, can they really afford to pay Timo Meyer? You know, starting at ten, they're going to end up probably having to pay him nine million a year. I mean, can they really do that? I mean, I I, I guess they could, but I mean, can, 
are, is it realistic for them to do that? That's all I'm saying. I've never seen them ever spend a lot of money before. Well, all right. So I pulled up their their uh, contract. So, so yeah, Sarangovich is a is a RFA. He's probably going to make a little bit of money. Eric Halla, I don't see being back. He's a free agent after this year. Miles Wood probably won't be back after this year. Thomas Tartar has been going from team to team the last couple years. Yeah, he won't be back. Um, I don't see I don't see Timo Meyer getting too big of a raise, but you know you got Jack Hughes making eight mil a year. You got Nico Hersher at seven point two five a year. Andre Palat at six a year. Um, yeah, so you really only have to Dougie really Hamilton worry about Dougie Hamilton is making a lot of money. Yeah, he's making nine. Uh, Damon Severson may or may not be back. He might actually be dealt in the next couple days. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Ryan Graves may or may not be back. I mean, they got the options here. I think, I think right now, if the Devils are smart, they don't worry about Timo Meyer until the off season, until they know what happens after the trade deadline. And I think that's gonna have a lot to do with it because they still have 1.2 under the there's 1.2 under the cap right now. So you don't have a ton of space. Brad, too. That was the other one Benny's Nation just mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. Pratt. Brad, good one, Benny. Uh, Brad's, a, Brad's an RFA after this year. Yeah, Brad. Yeah, but Brad, Brad's going to get paid, too. He, he, they, they've got some real talented forwards. No mm -hmm. question. So, I mean, they're up against the cap, so they're going to have to figure out ways to, to ease the cap. So don't be surprised if they start trading off a couple RFAs and some, some other um, – fairly expensive pieces over the next couple of days and letting guys walk that you didn't think would. So gents, uh, I'm just going to leave this comment that. right here at the bottom because I think this is the comment of the night so far. <laughs> um, oh no. You know, John, you know, I love you, but man, I, oh, I, had, that, I had that, I had that, you know, I've heard silver Fox. I've also heard summer Santa too. That was the, that was the other one. <laughs> When I, when I, when I, get, you know, I, I just got back from vacation last week and I'm all red. You probably can't see how sunburned my face is, but, um, yeah, it, it, I, I had the beard growing when I was away. So, you know, the summer Santa joke, joke was probably out again. From the guys I used to work with. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I will say this. Funny. But uh, our, with our uh, line discussion, we'll definitely talk about more and more on these deals. Um, we'll be reviewing, of course, the big deals. We already talked about the Patrick Kane one a little bit and Timo Meyer. We'll definitely give more overviews on those. We were talking a little bit about the players that were available for the Flyers that could go somewhere. Flyers trade options wise, see a team. Them the Flyers call up and dangle a player in front of them. Maybe they, they would be willing to make. Let's do it. Do you think the Flyers? Do you think that they go into uh into their bag of picks? I don't think. But uh, where are your heads at on this one in terms of Flyers trade options? Uh, Brian, why don't you start off with this? All right, so I mean, obviously, we know the three big ones. Um, you have Kevin Hayes, you have uh, JVR, and you have potentially, well, you know, Ivan Provorov. I think those are going to be your three big guns that are going to get you something. Um, I mean, there's also a bunch of little ones like so don't so. All right, so Nick Sealer is having a good year, so I won't be surprised if he gets traded for some picks. Um, Ivan Provorov, 26 years old. I've uh, been told that, you know, obviously we know all the rumors of him being toxic in the locker room, that this, that, and the other. But, you know, maybe he he winds up on the move. Because um, you got to create space here, not only just to bring guys up, but you have some guys that are probably going to – they're, they're going to need new contracts, i.e. Cam York. Can't let him walk. Can't let him go either um, unless you get something huge. But I uh, Cam York – He's really shown me this year that he's, he's NHL ready and he's playing really, really good hockey. Um, but I mean, outside of Kevin Hayes, James Van Riemsdyk, and, and Ivan Progrove, I looking at the roster, there's really not a lot of guys here that can really get a pull. 
Um, I mean, can you possibly trade Farabee? Yeah, but he's 23 years old. I don't know if I want to give up on him yet. Um, Morgan Frost. Hey, Brian, what about, what about Carter Hart? No. No? Under no nope. circumstance? No circumstance am I trading Carter Hart right now. Mainly because they did send down Sam Erson to get him consistent play. But, yeah, I don't trade Carter Hart. He's 24 years old. He's having one of the better years he's had in a while. Yes, he's letting some soft goals, but Carter Hart still has goals against under three and a safe percentage over nine. So this is one of the better years he's had in a while. I wouldn't give up on Carter Hart yet. This That's a that's a really solid goalie tandem that the Flyers can have moving forward that can get them to be more successful and back to winning ways sooner than later. But you could get me, a loss for him, though, right? Yeah, you could, but I think that's that, that one, it's going to set the franchise back a little bit further. Two, it just continues to show that the Flyers are not willing to wait for a goaltender, they, that they want a goaltender okay. that's ready now. They got to get that out of their head. They got to you got to get through the growing pains and that allow him to develop a little bit more. Well, it's not his fault that the season has gone awry. I mean, he. No. I, I, you're going to give up soft goals when you give up a thousand shots a game. No, I mean, no, that, it's not. <laughs> mm. You know, I mean that that's going to happen. I mean, they, they get they just give up too many quality. I mean, I, 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 these. the way I look at it too is just like you know, at heart is. Could you say yes? But that's basically giving up on him, and that's also kind of giving up on the direction you're going. In. You said, Bry, that sets the reset button, and then that's official. It's like, all right, well, if you're trading hard, then you're trading everybody at this point. It's like, all right, you want to really start fresh. What you're gonna do? You're gonna trade hard away, trade everybody away, because then. And it's like then giving up the fish. Yeah, I mean, Maddie, that's that's pretty accurate because, I mean, if if you look at it, like I know I know Chuck Fletcher is finally admitting that it's time to rebuild. You have a twenty-four year old goaltender. What's better than that? I mean, he's already okay. Let me let NHL. me bring up Good. somebody. Let me bring up somebody mm-hmm. who maybe you guys could sign in the off season as a free agent, Thatcher Demko. I mean, he's kind of been floundering this year in Vancouver. I mean, the situation isn't great for him, but he's also has some injury history as well. I, me personally, I'd rather stick with Hart. Okay, no, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there, guys. I, I again, you he's, know, th- th- this is just, this is just, this is just. No, it's guys that, not, you, know, you could get a lot in trade for, and 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 who, who you if if you traded a guy like Hart, who could you replace him with? Because obviously, if you if you would make a trade like that, which I don't think they should, but. If they did, who are you going to replace them with? That's the whole, that's the whole key there. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Matt. Right, he's been he was injured for a, for a while. Yeah. This year. What did he miss? Like two months. But and he's coming back too much week. of a red he's flag. Two months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, it's too much. I missed that the whole thing, Maddie. You kind of cut out. Interesting. Did you see someone take a? F- oh, sorry. I was gonna say that um, he has talent, but uh, his injuries are too much of a red flag. I wouldn't do it. Uh, Benny's Nation mm-hmm. saying, um, "Could you see someone take a flyer on Tony D?" Um, what do you think you. about that? I'll tell you. Because it's been a rough Carolina. year for the Flyers' defense, but Tony D'Angelo has actually been a bright spot on the team. Tortorella likes Tony. He likes he likes how Tony's been playing this year. It hasn't been the best, but he said nobody has the outlet pass like he does. He's a great. He's got a great first pass, and he wants to continue to build off of that. Always has. Mm-hmm. Always has. That's that's been one of his strengths. And, you know, this is a guy that also had a hat trick in the NHL as well. Mm-hmm. You know, as a Ranger, he got a hat trick against the Devils. So, you know, sure. I normally wouldn't remember who he had the hat trick against. But if it's the Devils, you do remember that. <laughs> so. Yeah, but for me, it's just those three guys. Those are the I three biggest forward. pieces. Ted, I hear you. But, you know, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not saying you would do it. I'm just throwing it out there that, you know, it 
depending on what you get, you know, it, would it be something that you consider? But, you know, I understand. I get it. So the, the thing now is with other players available out there, I mean, um, obviously, I'd rather steer than go to a contender, which I mean, and I guess Hayes really him credit. I also think, too, that Hayes is a tough sell, though, only because you got to return on the try and work in the cap. So that's a hard sell for a lot of teams, even if you're offering to take a good chunk of it. Some team willing to bite on it, but I think it's a. I feel like some teams would be like, eh, I don't know, you know. That's like, especially if they're competitive. But what if we trade for this guy and then it winds up we don't get the, you know, we're stuck, even if they retained a decent portion of the salary. I could tell you yeah, I, that I think I feel like to them that that would be a tough sell for for some junior. Matt, what about like a team like Dallas who could really use another center? What? Hayes. Yeah, which teams? No, Dallas. D- Dallas. You, you, what, it, Dallas could use Hayes. Hayes would be Hayes. Would Dallas be a is a possibility. Yeah, I, I think that that's a team they need. They need some more offense, and he could definitely supply it. You know, and they like, they like, they they have a big team. They like big players. That's something that they they seem to like. And Hayes can play both ends of the ice. We know that he's a good defensive player as well as a good offensive player. You know, if the Flyers offered to uh, to pay half his salary for say two or three years, uh, I think they can get a lot for him. And I agree. Kevin Hayes is a three hand. Three it would be great if they can for two or three years. That to me, you get a lot for that. That's yeah. And I agree. I mean, you got three teams already interested in, in Hayes as it is. If you can flyers are willing to retain his salary. Somebody will take them. Oh yeah. Oh, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? Yeah, they'll suffer. They'll suffer down the line. But you know what? He's already. I think he's got four more years left. Right. On his contract, yeah. and and teams are more like teams will will be okay. We'll take him. We'll take his contract on for three and a half a year, versus seven, which is a little like we we all agreed that the contract was a little crazy, but three and a half that's reasonable. That's that's below the league that, average for a player teams, of his caliber. Teams will kick, will, especially if they can kick that stuff down the road. A lot of teams do that. Uh, you know, Brian, still uh, only saying, why don't we hear Seattle making trades? Can't afford to do anything to being an expansion team. I don't know. No. Because Seattle, the sum of the parts, like, I mean, the sum of the parts are better than the are better than the talent in Seattle. You know, yeah, just that. I'm sure there's there, they probably just hmm. putting their feet in the water now. I mean, they there's still three days until the trade deadline. It's not like the trade deadline's tomorrow. They still have time to figure it out, to figure out what they need, what's available, what are teams willing to give up. I guarantee you Ron Francis is on the phone talking to people, but you know, if if you look at the, the trend of the trades this year, teams are are overpaying right now. And I'm sure they're they're a team right now that's like, we're don't want to overpay. And I don't blame them. They they built a really good culture and they built a really good roster off of this expansion team by going young. And I don't think they're going to get, get away from that. I think Ron Francis is doing a great job, and he's not going to make a trade just to make a trade. Like Brad said, you know, the whole is equal to the sum of the parts. If they don't feel like they need to, to make a move, they're not going to. You know, it's it's senseless to make a move to, just to make a move. You know, it helps nobody. Yeah, and they're, a team all, that, they're a hardworking team. I mean, that, that's, the, that's the main nature of that team. They're really hardworking. Yeah, you guys saw them play recently. I think they they played. You guys played them recently. They play really hard. I mean, they're not a very talented team, but they they outwork everybody. And uh, you know, at, at this point, you know, individually, player for player, they're not going to get much for any of these guys if they try to if they try to trade them. 
You know, and I don't think that they're going to trade their trade their draft picks. They're just not going to do that. I, Francis has never has never really been that kind of a GM anyway. So I don't see that 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 that's going to happen any any time soon. He didn't do it with with the the Hurricanes. Why would he do it with uh, Seattle? He, he's yeah. not going to do that. Uh, John here saying, what about Tony D'Angelo? So, okay. So we've already had our opinion on Tony D'Angelo. What about Lawton? Uh, would you throw Lawton out there? He's shown the leadership qualities and having an A on his jersey. Do you think you could get something good for him back or trade? I mean, I do my best to keep Scotty Lawton. I mean, he's one of the better leaders. He's he's one of the better blue collar players on this team. You know, I think I think the guys in the locker room respect him when he has something to say. The guys, the same thing with the guys on the ice. You know, uh, he's not the best offensive guy, but he plays with a lot of heart and he plays the game the right way. Like I said, he's a leader. He's he's the only guy wearing a letter on that roster. So that says a lot. So I don't think I see Scotty Lawton going anywhere. What's his contract situation? He's got four years left. Greg like chimes in half. with, uh, as I said. Okay, that's not that much then. They, mm -mm. Oh. And as Greg said, uh, as I said, when they hired him, Torts is the wrong coach for a rebuild, which means we'll be in draft purgatory for years. Yay. By the way, how's it mm -hmm. going, Greg? I don't agree with, with Greg here or his last comment. Um, I don't think Fletcher's been – uh, and I've said this before. I strongly to believe Fletcher's not fully to blame for where the Flyers are right now. They're, they're not. He's not. You know, he's cleaning up Hextall's mess, which we clearly see everything that he did was not the right move for the Flyers. Look at what he's doing in Pittsburgh. I'm sure you guys are enjoying that. Um, they're already chanting to fire him after, what, two years? He's got to clean up the mess of the guy before him About that. with some of these contracts. I mean, Fletcher can only do so much with what was given to him before. Now, do I think there's a bigger issue above him? Absolutely. I absolutely believe there's an even bigger issue up there. But I don't want to give Fletcher full blame for what the situation is right now. He's made some decent moves to, to try and make this team better. I think Torts is doing the best he can, and I think he is the guy to bring in to get the young guys playing the game the way they should be and create a really good culture for the young guys in the locker room. I agree with that 100%. Torts is not a guy who likes losing, so he wants to build a winning culture. <laughs> Who's better to, to put in a situation there than a guy who wants a, a winning culture who can teach the guys, the younger guys, how to win and play the game the right way, especially at the NHL level? John's and he will, he will do that. For sure, if if they give him a chance, nobody ever gives him a chance to do that. That's no. that's that's the problem. Look, when he was coached, when he coached the Rangers, you know the Rangers, the the Rangers actually before they they went and got Elaine Vigneault, you take a look. He uh, he took a young team that didn't really have a whole lot of talent. You know, I mean, their best players were Callahan and Dubinsky, and Lundqvist, of course. But I mean, those were their their best players, and uh, you know, he got them he got them to the playoffs. You know, and, and he built a pretty nice base, and then, uh, you know, Multiple Elaine Vigneault was able to, uh, yeah, times, and, yeah, and Elaine Vigneault was able to uh, feed off of that and uh, get them to the next level. But uh, Tortorella is very capable of, of of doing what he has to do to uh, get young players to go in the right direction. I don't think that I, I think he's a lot more mellow actually than he used to be. He used to be. If you guys think he's a maniac now, you should have seen him back then. Yeah, okay. and he's, back, he's a lot more. He's calmed down. He's calmed down a lot, and uh, I, I think that uh, you guys got to give him a chance to uh, to get, to teach these kids how to play the game the right way. I, I I think that he will do that. And to jump back to Fletcher real quick, I think some of the picks that Fletcher has made over the last couple of years have been really good. You know, Frost is starting to to really pan out into the player that they thought he'd be. Um, Carter Gauthier is a high end talent. Um, I believe he drafted Cam York, or that may have been Hexall's last year. I know Cam York was on that borderline. He's been really good. Um, no, no, that was that was a Fletcher pick. It was a Fletcher pick. 
Okay, so even more proof to, to, to what I'm I'm trying to get at. You know, he, he's made yep. some really good picks. I think his biggest issue is having to clean up Hextall's mess. I think Hextall made moves just to make moves. Like my best example for this is Scott Hartnell for RJ Umberger. That was a move just to make a move. That like, was that terrible. Was, that yeah. was a ridiculous trade. And that's why I'm yeah, not as I'm not as gung ho on Fire Fletcher, Fire Fletcher, because he has a hell of a mess to clean up here. And Hexall, I think, puts his team back more than he moved them forward. Jalen, the, the truth green is, and, and the going. truth is, is that, yeah. So obviously, he's uh, he's very happy with, very satisfied with the uh, with the season that that his team is having. Um, how could you not? But I mean, truth is, is that we've said this before. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Really, Hextall is just a symptom of the overall problem. You know, we've had guidelines and have tried to pull off trades alive and kicking when they really should have been maybe thinking about, you know, okay, we really need to find a true starting goaltender. We maybe need need to shore up this we maybe we straight away some of these top players because that could come back and bite us in the ass and a lot of times it did and it was hextall made some boneheaded decisions and his predecessor before him made some bone and predecessor before him made boneheaded decisions it's been a consistent problem with the flyers the wheeling and dealing hot shot men yeah he got to the finals in 2010 didn't win it. Haven't gone back since. Now we're trying to fix that problem, and you see the problem of trying to fix that. I've had refused to do what you do, which is get bad to get good. This is the itch, buddy. Besides, Hextall has to share a responsibility in that of where the Flyers have put themselves into because it was a culture that had been developed before Hextall even got there. And unfortunately, he fell right into that culture that hurt the team even further as we went down the line. And uh, Maddie, you and I can agree to this all day, every day. The problem goes even higher up than, than Chuck Fletcher. You know, I, I was saying this earlier to one of the guys in right. the Flyers Nation group, um, one of the admins over there who's, who's a really great hockey mind, by the way. So if you're not in it, go check out that group for sure. Um, he, the problem goes even higher, and it's all loyalists to the organization, to the to the Flyers family. It, they have to get away from that in order for that for this team to really be successful. They have to bring in executives that are have nothing to do with this organization whatsoever. Until because until that happens, you're going to get nothing but loyalty to the organization, which isn't a bad thing. But when you're going through the same motions over and over and over again and getting the same result, not only is that the definition of insanity, it's just stupid. You have to sometimes, you have to get the outside perspective. It especially goes above the GM. I think Chuck Fletcher at the time was a good move. I think it's been an okay move after after these years but i don't think he's the full problem and no i don't necessarily think david scott's even an issue do i think comcast is an issue owning this scene yeah but you got to get rid of homegrown you have to get rid of bobby clark you have to get rid of anybody associated with this organization from the past yeah and you have to bring in some fresh maybe even younger hockey minds that are going to be able to adjust to the game the way it is today and not try and recreate something that was good 10, 15 years ago because the game is not the same anymore. This game is all about speed and finesse. Who do the Flyers have that are speed and finesse? Right. They got some good players, but they don't have anybody that's really truly speed and finesse that will take this team to the next level. Yeah. Right. Uh, Swoopy's saying, uh, don't give up lots. He's a leader. Future lots. Um, Swoopy also does go on to say, I don't 
understand why teams don't lean plan when it comes to the owner, GM, coach, and scouts. When it comes to the type of players, system, style of play, style of players playing, and skills they want and look for. Basically have a coherent plan. And unfortunately, that's something the Flyers have lacked in the past, and that hasn't helped their situation. I mean, hell, with not just Hextall, but with everybody who's been for some reason. And uh, and he's saying, I'm not sure we go into this saying like the least amount. Therefore, he should stay and be in charge of this rebuild. No, no, no. I think that Fletch is, has he been perfect? No time. No one before him was perfect either. It's been a, con like I said, it's been a consistent issue of, of guy failing or trying to see if they can mold the team into what they want to turn it into. And then they get into a conflict with the higher ups and then they're gone. And so you use the build, and now you've got more problems than you solved because you half assed the rebuild. Now you got to fix that. So that's the problem. <laughs> that is the problem. And Anthony's saying the problem is the higher ups of the Flyers want a winning team and a wing, uh, a winning product. And Hextall had to do something to make the team better. And he tried to make the team win the higher ups of the organization. And even Clark thinks he's. Still, doing still entitled to do whatever he wants because he has been with the Flyers for a long time. And as Bri had said before, game has things have changed. You got a salary cap to contend with. You've got to get more speed. You've got to get more score, a lot more. You have to have a winning that's perf that's well damn near perfect. Because goaltending many times has won cups in recent years. Just look at Tampa. The, we get right down to it. The Flyers have put themselves in this situation through consistent botches of doing a rebuild, but doing it halfway and not really fully realizing a plan because they didn't begin with or they weren't agreeing on it or they weren't going to rebuild at all. They were just trying to hot shot their way back into the playoffs and saying, fuck you to the future. Sure, we don't have the results we have now. This is the problem we're in because of those mistakes made in previous regimes. And only, and I have to say this, may he rest in peace, the late great uh, Mr. Snyder, the one big issue he had. He really shouldn't have been as loyal to some of them as he should have been. Shouldn't have been as loyal to Holmgren as he was. He shouldn't have been as loyal to Clarky as he was. And it's a shame. But he was. You know, I love him. That's the one one thing I can ding him on. Too much loyalty. Foot down and say, no, we got to change this up a little bit. But it's what happened. My thing here, my thing here is, Maddie, is, is we're going to see this year is the make or break year for Chuck Fletcher. Now, what happens at the trade on is really going to determine – one, hmm. where the Flyers are headed. Two, where his head's at. Three, if he really is going to buy into everything that he said this afternoon. That's my that's my thing. That's my biggest issue. Because he, he's been here long enough, and this team hasn't gotten much better. In fact, a lot of people would say they got worse. I mean, they're a lot better than they were last year. I'll tell you that right now. One thing that people don't want to seem to, to remember is you know, you're not going to hit on every draft pick. It's impossible. You're but, not kidding. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to hit on every draft pick. No. Even first. <laughs> even some first on pan. Gotta, listen, look what at the happens. Rangers. Okay. Kratzoff got just – who was the ninth pick in the draft? Oh, no. Yeah, very recent. Still very fresh. <laughs> okay. He's, he is now in Vancouver for a seventh-round pick and a – and a career minor league player. Okay. He was cleared out for cap. Correct. Race. That's, yeah. that's not, yeah, that's about <laughs> as bad a first round pick as you could possibly have. Guy had six goals for you in, uh, right. in all, in, in the five years that he, that he was a first round pick and refused to go to the minor leagues. He, he always had to play in Russia. 
because he was mm-hmm. too big of a baby to play in the uh, play in the AHL. And now he's going to do the same thing in Vancouver. Now he's not a problem anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he can. He's not going to be the Rangers' problem anymore. He can be somebody else's problem. <laughs> but I mean, jumping back to to, to Fletcher here, real quick. Um, yeah, this is going to be make or break trade trade deadline for him. It's, it's either he's either going to save his job for another year or he's going to be fired at the end of it. You know, this is this is going to be huge. You know, he says he wants to rebuild. He wants to sell, sell, sell. Let's see what he does. You know, let's see if he can. Because, like I said, not every GM is perfect. Some of them are going to make mistakes in the draft, free agency, trades, this, that, and the other. No GM is perfect. They all make bad deals here and there. But, you know, he's, he, he has had quite a mess to clean up. And a lot of that is because of the guys above him. Because of the guys above him and the guys before him. And it sucks because I think he, if this team were to win – they could attract some pretty good free agents and guys would want to come here. Um, and now you got – Oh, a lot of – listen, a lot of players, you, you can see it in other sports. A lot of players like coming to Philadelphia because the fans are so intense and, uh, you know, a lot of players love that, you know, mm-hmm. and, and especially especially the real good ones. They like that kind of stuff, okay? Mm-hmm. They want real – they want real intense fan bases, you know? They, that's why they want to come to New York too. Same thing. Of course. You know, you know, guys who are winners who right. really who 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 really want to play, they'll they'll come to Philly. They, they proved it in other sports. I mean, look, baseball. They baseball. You know, Bryce Harper came here, and now that Bryce Harper came here, all of a sudden uh, Trey Turner wanted to come here, so now he's on the team too. You know, I mean, it's it that's that's the thing. The the, the Flyers have got to also in free agency this year. Regardless of how old a player is that might be available, they got to go out. And they got to bring a star in here, and make sure that the star is a popular guy amongst the league, so that when they want to make deals, they'll want to come here and play. You know, like, like like the Rangers did with Panarin. You know, you get Panarin now. All of a sudden, uh, you know, last year Vitrano was Vitrano and Cop wanted to come here. You know, th- this year Patrick Kane wanted to come here. Tarasenko wanted to come here. You know, all of a sudden they waved it. When somebody says, do you want to get traded to the Rangers? All of a sudden they, they get rid of their no trade clause. The Flyers need to get a player. Well, I'm not saying necessarily a guy that's as good as Panarin, but a guy who who can play the game the right way and, you know, can put some points on the board. And uh, guys who want to play with them. That's very important this year. I think they need to do something like that. The, the, the Blue Jackets did it with, with uh, Gaudreau. Now it didn't work out. Because because a lot of guys got hurt on that team, but still, the whole point is when they go out to go, when they go out to get some free agents, you know, they're going to want to play there because Line A's there and he's there, and you know, and Zach mm-hmm. Wierenski's there, so they got some players there, you know, and and that that's important. That's something that they've got to do. And I have a funny feeling that Cutter Gauthier's on the on the horizon here because the Isaac Radcliffe deal opens up a roster spot and opens up the money that they're going to need to get him under contract. So I think that was the main reason for that move. But once he gets up here and he starts playing with Frost and Frost continues to develop, Tippett continues to have the year that he's having into next year, I think this team is going to be okay. I really do. They just have to get rid of some of the – I don't want to say junk, but – No, you just got got to get rid of the dead dead wood. mm -hmm, The dead weight. Yeah, which that's, that, is unfortunately that's, the guys who I thought would be okay being here. Kevin Hayes, again, having a great year this year. JVR hasn't really been the guy that they expected him to be since coming back. And it is what it yeah, is. But, but you get but rid but of those guys and you bring up the young ones. Van Riemsdyk for the right team who need help, who needs help on the power play and needs a net front presence. That's the kind of he's the kind of guy that 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 will get traded to the to a team that if they use him right, uh, you know they could be they could be factors. He could be a factor. You know he'd look good on the Islanders to be honest with you. You know I mean they need they need somebody besides they need somebody besides uh, besides their their captain to stand in front of the net once in a while and uh, and 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 take a beating to go out in front of the net all the time and try to score some uh, garbage goals. Mm-hmm. Every team needs a player like that. You know, every good team has a guy who scores a lot of garbage goals. And he's the kind of guy 
He's big. He's strong. He's pretty feisty in front of that net. You know, a lot of teams, especially in the playoffs, you need dirty goals, and he's just the guy to do it. Ted, you and I have had this conversation over and over and over again. Just because Johnny wanted to come here doesn't mean they wanted him here. And what money were they going to get? They had no money to spend on him. Look at the money that he took. Where were the Flyers going to get that money? They're up against the cap now with who they have. You think Johnny would have helped? Nobody was going to take JVR's contract until the trade deadline. Kevin Hayes was up in the air. They don't we don't even still don't even know if Kevin Hayes is going to be gone. You really thought they were going to have the cap space to sign Johnny Goudreau because he wanted Chuck Fletcher said he doesn't, didn't even want him. And all of a sudden, that's a, that you see, that's that's going to hang over his head for the rest of his career, isn't it? Because he didn't sign Johnny Goudreau. He didn't want Johnny. Yeah. Johnny was the only one in that in, in that camp that wanted to come here. He was the only one. Fletcher didn't want him because he knew he wasn't going to be able to afford him. I, I'm, I mean, I'm just saying, like, everybody wants to keep throwing Johnny Goudreau. Throw other examples at me. Give me, give me, give me something else. You, you want to say the Kevin Hayes the deal? Only... Okay, let's talk about the Kevin Hayes deal. Yeah, that legitimate the only legitimate thing that I can really hold a gripe against Fletcher on is was that Kevin Hayes deal. That's his entire time as G. Now I will say the only thing that I think Fletcher fires were closer than he realized. And I think the reason why he thought that was because of the year. So he bought into that, and he said, okay, let's go all in on this. So he made some deals, he made some trades, and he thought the Flyers were going to be competitive. Unfortunately, we got the results we got. We realized, okay, but we were going to go. And so, once again, we're back to where we're at. So, again, it's one of those things. The same thing happened with San Jose. They bought into 2019. Mistake and this there, Carl, that big ass deal. And some other moves they probably shouldn't have, and they didn't realize. Hey, your team's kind of, you know, north at all for you guys, and it didn't end well for them. They didn't make the playoffs. Not a similar thing. You bought into a really strong season, and to me, kind of one of those. It, it was not a mirage, but it was one of those things of you overachieved. And sometimes the GM realizes it. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they think, oh, okay, maybe we're better off than we realized. And you make the mistake and you go all in, and then you get the results you get. And I think that's the ultimate thing that happened here with Fletcher. I thought it was closer than fooling. The year that, that first year with me and Yo, that could have fooled anybody. That fooled us. We thought the Flyers were well on their way to finally being up in long. Maybe that wasn't true. <laughs> so Vigneau did the same thing with the Rangers. Though. Very harsh lesson learned on that one. Vigneau did the same thing with the Rangers, though. He took Tortorella's team and uh, you know and, and and brought it to the uh, and brought it to the finals. I mean, you know, he did it. He did it there too. The final, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Matty, like, so just, let's see. We we sit here and we say yeah. like we can we can sit here and we can count all the bad moves of any GM in NHL history, and but again, GMs are going to make bad moves. You know, the Flyers have options here that they can move, and Fletcher's going to do his best to make the deal that fits for the team. At the time, Johnny didn't make sense. Why, like, why keep pushing that? Like, he knew that Johnny didn't make sense. This team is not just one player away. You know, we still have Cam Atkinson, who hasn't played more than a couple games this year. Coots hasn't played a game in almost two years. Now you have TK out. You have players, younger players that still that are starting to turn into NHL players now because they're hitting, they're start, going to start hitting their stride. Ryan Ellis tip it as example. One. And Ryan, Ryan Ellis. Okay, that's a bad move. That was a bad move. But yeah, but I will who, say this. But who knew? 
Who knew that he was going to be hurt all the time? He's going to be That's the thing. No one knew. But I will say this. In that whole deal, everybody got screwed on that one. So it's not just the Flyers who got screwed on that deal. Pretty much. Nobody won that Nolan one. Patrick still hasn't played yet. <laughs> nobody won that yeah. one. Nolan Patrick, Nolan Patrick played four games for Vegas since that trade happened. Same amount of games that Ryan Ellis has played. And Cody Glass is Cody Glass. He's not really anything special. So uh, whatever. But point is. And Phil Myers, I don't even think is in the NHL anymore. No, I think he's he's either with Tampa Bay or he's a free agent. Either way, I don't think he's in the NHL. I think he's in the AHL. Hmm. But yeah, uh, Brian just Brian just said it. The only other deal that I can think of that that really backfired, Risto. And it usually depends yeah. on the day. Is Risto? I wouldn't have signed him to that contract. Right. But that trade at the time was okay. He had a solid first season for the Flyers, which earned him another contract. But I mean, it is what it is. You go, you go into these deals, obviously based off of what they've done before, not what they're. You can't predict the future, so you can't sit there and say, "Oh, okay, we're going to sign Rist to a five-year deal, but he's only going to play two years really well, and the rest of it is going to suck." You, you obviously don't know what the future brings. You know, I love the Shane Goss spare trade. I, to be completely honest with you, who may be on the move in the next couple of days, Arizona shopping him. Um, he got nothing back in return, so he just completely shed cap there. How is that a bad trade? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you didn't get any draft capital back in return, but you shed, you shipped him off somewhere that was dumb enough to take his entire contract. Of course, Arizona is the salary dumping ground. I've been saying this for years. Um, I thought that yes, was a great are. move. <laughs> it's the NHL dumpster. For- yeah, I mean, they took Shea Weber's contract. Like, are you serious? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. And they, now they're taking uh, they took the Rangers, they took the Rangers, the Rangers money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See this. Mm-hmm. But you know what? This See, is something the, that the, the funny thing is, is that be, the uh, the Coyotes, the be able to. they got the, 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 the Coyotes got a free, a free third round pick just by taking the Rangers money. Right. <laughs> I mean, but honestly, here, here's something funny. You ever notice Arizona's only ever done two things right in their entire lives? They got to the Western County 12, shocking to this day, shocking. Then the only other thing they've done right is they had cool jerseys. Two good things they've ever done in their entire existence. Well, that is also- it. They also, they also, goddamn. They also had. They, Could you they imagine Shane Doan. having? They drafted Shane Doan, so give him that too. He was one hell of a player for a long Okay, time true. That was the one. That was that was their one. That's their claim. To uh, well, Shane actually, Doan. I'm gonna. Cur- Actually, well, yes, he did play his whole career in Arizona, but he actually wasn't drafted by the Coyotes. He was drafted by the Jets. He dressed, same organization. Right. Same same franchise. But there. So I, you are right on that. He will go down as their franchise player. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that's not a lot. Because the Jets' real no. franchise player was Dale Howard Chuck, so... <laughs> And that's also the stupid franchise. Oh, hi, Mr. Brodo. What's up, Ry? No. Fire's good yet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> I can't believe Boston. Uh, you left. So. He's got two goals. All right, Jess, so we've gone through uh, any – damn. Were there any um, any other – or, or did you get to the second period for the NHL? The last thing I want to say real quick is, is you know, I know this fan base is frustrated. I, I get it. You know, I, I suffer – I have to suffer the same deal with this team on the wall. Um, it's – it's rough. It's rough. 
and and it sucks having having to deal with it, especially in a, in a major market like like Philadelphia. But you got to continue to have faith in this organization. Got to continue to have faith in the GM that he's going to continue to make the right moves, that he's going to bring up the right guys at the right time. It, you just have to have faith. I I really. I really don't think with the injuries, this team is as bad as people think. They just have to get healthy. They, they have no stars on their team right now. They have none. They're all hurt. They're all pretty much done for the year. TK is still up in the air, but they're saying he's going to miss extended time. So he could possibly be done for the season. That's a shame with him. Mm-hmm. He was having, a, he was having yeah. a career year. Yeah, he was. He was. You know, it's... You know, sometimes you just got to know when to pack up shop and sell everything off. But have faith that, you know, the guys that are in the system now are going to be good. You know, Tyson Forrester, give him a call up. See what he has the NHL level. He's, a, he's, a, he's an all-star. Um, uh, uh, Elliot, um, the Destroyer's up. See what he's got. You know, have faith in the, in, in the youth movement here. Like, because that's what's happening now. It's a youth movement. Have faith that the, the young guys are going to come up and, and – the blue collar, hardworking players that succeed under Tortorella. If if you guys don't take anything else away from this, take this. Have faith in Tortorella. He's going to get his team back to where they need to be. He's going to get these guys playing the way the game that the way they should. TK is a perfect example. TK is the perfect example. Look at what he did the last two years, and look at what he's doing this year under Tortorella. Have faith. Look at Hayes. Like Just have faith. Hayes has had a good year too. Yeah, under Tortorella. And- you know, Tortorella was not very nice to Hayes. Tortorella put, gave him tough love. And that, mm-hmm. That's what he does. You know, and usually, you know, guys that are competitive players, that, that'll that bring out the best in them. And you got to take it as tough love and stop and not take it as something personal. Yeah, exactly. But I think the Flyers are going to be fine. Give them two years, they'll be back in the playoffs. I still believe that. I think that can happen. I don't know if it's going right. to happen next year. Next, hey, it's going to be too hard for one season, but I think in two years they can do it. Two years. Quick yeah. turnaround like the Rangers did. Yeah, there's no reason why they can't. Uh, all right, gents. So we'll see if that does play out. Um, but the first period is brought to you by, if you are looking to buy or sell a home or you have a change of career or brokerage, EXP Realty LLC at 302-682-8820 or visit him at allen.foy at EXP Realty. And uh, yeah, big step in life when you start moving out and you make that big change and you make that big uh, make that big step. So do it right. Go to Allen Foy. You don't want to make a mistake with something like that. So EXP and on to the second period brought to you by all campus so see uh, New Jersey have a nice little shop down there at all campus on the boardwalk and uh, John Coyle who runs the radio run stop down there and he's given up 20 shirts to all of the subscribers out there so listen if you guys, uh, you're down there, get yourself a nice little discount. Say hi to John and uh, where are some of your team. And on to the second period we go, and it's time to review this year's NHL trade deadline. Which def- it's been one to remember. There have been some big blockbusters that have come through, and uh, there have been some interesting moves here and there. Air made by sure up their pushes for the playoffs. Some trying to sure up their futures by getting some draft capital, maybe some young prospects that they can mold. And let's take a look at what we've got here. But before we dive into all that, we got Kenny Grant chiming in. I've been ready for youth high level. Hopefully, JVR and or Hayes will bring back some of that potential. Well, we'll see. We'll see, Kenny. Thanks for chiming in, brother. Keep it rolling in tonight. And ever keep we move forward here. So, gents, NHL trade deadline into it. So we talked about the Patrick Kane deal. 
uh, during the opening portion of the show, which, I mean, makes sense. It's going to be hard not to talk about that, considering the fact that one of the hosts here is a fan of the team that got Patrick Kane. That overall deal was the Rangers acquiring Patrick Kane, defenseman Cooper Jack from the Blackhawks, and as well in the three-team trade, the Blackhawks received a second-round pick in the 2023 NHL draft and a fourth-round pick in the 2025 NHL and it's sorry and from the Coyotes and the Coyotes acquired a third round pick in the 2025 NHL draft and I believe they took some money in that deal as well so moving on from uh, other deals that came through the wire on the 28th here uh, the Minnesota Wild getting goose stuff Nyquist on the 23 draft Interesting depth move from the Minnesota Wild. I mean, Nyquist had his run with the Penguins for a period of time. Then he, was, you know, do you the Wild have made a few moves during this trade deadline? What do you think about the Wild? Do you think that they might also made their, of getting out of the first round and maybe doing something in the playoffs? I mean, between this move. And the move to get uh, Marcus Johansson today shows me that they, they're, they're definitely looking to add depth up the middle. Because um, I definitely think that's where they're the weakest. I think, think some of their best players are on their wing. Um, and defensively, I think they're pretty solid. Goaltending's been okay all season long. Um, don't, I don't expect them to be done, but I think, I, I think bringing in Johansson and – and Gustav Nyquist brings in a little bit um, of a stronger, stronger depth and a little bit of leadership that they could use definitely up on the, on that, you know, on the forwards. Uh, I think they're going to make a push for the second round, but ultimately, I I really with the way the West is right now, I don't necessarily see them getting past the second round, even if they get out of the first. It's it's they're going to have an early exit. Brad, how do you feel about the Wild? Well, I think they get they're going to get some better, some more offense, but I, I just don't see them getting out of the first round. I really don't. I mean, they're just not that good. You know, their goaltending isn't that good. Their defense still isn't that good. Uh, you know, they're very they're they're like a very average team. I mean, you know, average teams don't don't uh, usually go very far in the playoffs. I mean, I agree that they're average, but defensively, I mean, they're plus nine in goal differential this year, and they're sitting Although, in third in their division. I'd say they're above average, but yeah, I mean, I agree with you. They're not getting far in the playoffs. Listen, the only reason that the only reason that they're even in up the playoffs is because the West stinks. Let's be honest, okay? There are six teams in the East that that are better than any team in the West right now. Okay, I don't think there's any question. Okay, you look at it. In the East, Boston, Toronto, and uh, Tampa Bay, Carolina, the Devils, and the Rangers are all better than any team in the West. I mean, the West is terrible. That's the only reason that they're even competitive right now. I mean, uh, I mean, they're they're a talented bunch. They still have Matt Zuccarello, who's been pretty productive. You have Kirill uh, Kaprizov, who's a stud. I agree with they that, but the pieces Hartman, there. It's just Hartman is back to being norm, back to normal again. What does he have? Ten goals this year, something like that. Yeah, he's he's, he's yeah he played way over his head. Man. Yeah, he's back. He's back to being uh, you know the same the same ten goal ten goal punk that he's always been. You know that that's more that plays with an edge, but really isn't all that good. So I, I I'm not I'm not convinced about the wild. I just don't think that they're good enough. I I, I really don't. Not not yeah. at this point. I think at, between. Between uh, between Winnipeg and uh, Dallas, it, they're they're both significantly better than uh, than Minnesota. I, I don't think there's any way Minnesota beats Winnipeg or Dallas. Well, again, keep in mind Minnesota's ten games over five hundred. So I I, know. I mean I get what you're saying. Like I I agree the West is not as good as the East. I I totally agree with you there, and I totally agree that Minnesota is not going to get. Anywhere past the really anywhere past the second round, I, I don't think they get out of the first round. I mean, are they are they really? Do you really think they're going to beat they're going to beat Winnipeg or uh, 
Dallas, Winnipeg and Dallas are both real good defensive hockey teams. You know, they'll shut down, they'll shut down that offense, and Minnesota's not that good defensively at all. Yeah, I think they're, they're one of the better defensive teams. I think their special teams is where they struggle, their power play specifically. I think their power play is, is – It should be a lot. It should be a lot better. Mm-hmm. It should be a lot better because they got enough talent to be better. They they don't kill kill penalties that well either. No, Minnesota. No, I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not convinced about them. You know, they they're going to need a lot more than just what they did. I mean, you know, just just because they're tough is is not going to is they're still not tougher than Dallas and Winnipeg is still a better team than they are. The the, the bottom line is both teams have way better goaltending, and I think that that always comes out in the playoffs. I mean, between Oniger, between Oniger and Hellebuke, I mean, those two guys are way better than than anybody that that, that uh, Minnesota puts in the goal. You know, whether it's Flurry or anybody else, they're 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 not as good. I agree. I definitely agree there. I mean, I can't I can't see it. Yeah, you know, I could be wrong. I mean, I'm not listening. I don't know everything, but uh, if if it was my money and I was betting on it, I wouldn't bet on them getting out of the first round. We should do that. We should start putting some uh, hockey betting stuff together uh, too. Uh, right, listen, I already made. I already made my bet. Four, <laughs> fourteen, four, I got fourteen to one on the Rangers winning the cup. So we'll see. Oh, that's that's uh, good Tom for saying, New Jersey. By the way, way happy Robinson. soon to be trade accurate. deadline day, boys. Uh, the flyer. Ted also went on to say this year's dead. And Tyler Collet saying Rangers going all in, Brad. Damn. As they should. <laughs> and also pulled that up by saying this year's trade 100 times fold. But so it usually always is. The NHL trade deadline is always usually more active than the NBA. Yeah, and it's a lot more fun, too, because, uh, you know, there, there are, there, there's, there's so many things to think about. And they don't let you retain salaries in the NBA. You know, and they don't let you dump salaries. They're so into that, all that stuff. And, uh, you know, it's it's unfortunate for them, but that's how it is. By the way, real quick, um, give a shout out to Jersey boy Eric Robinson on the Columbus Blue Jackets has his first NHL hat trick tonight against the Buffalo Sabres. Nice. Wow. Nice. By the way, uh, wow. the nice. Predators, the Predators just scored, by the way. And uh, have taken a one nothing lead over Pittsburgh, and you know you know how desperate Pittsburgh is right now to try to make the playoffs. What do you think Pittsburgh is going to do with the deadline? I heard they're linked to Brock Besser. Yeah, that's what that's what I that's what I and J T Miller. I, I I heard I heard that they would like mm-hmm. to try to get him. How the hell are they going to afford J T Miller? We'll figure that, out. That Just sounds ask. like a them. They They'll actually they they lost. Um, Pittsburgh Kapanen to the St. Louis Blues on waivers, so that takes that's, a little bit of money off the table for yeah, them. Yeah, that's three point. That's three point two mil off the table. So that, I guess that helps. But I mean, you're paying Crosby all that money. You're still paying Malkin, Malkin, and you're still paying Latang. So I, I, I guess I mean, that's, and, that's and, just detail. The only thing that matters is know, getting they, back to the postseason. What are they going to do about Jerry? Jerry's a free agent. They have to pay him. Pulling up their roster now. Again, just now. details. It's all about getting back to the playoffs. That's all that matters. Okay. No, no. I'm just, you know, I'm just. It, Let's it, get it, back to the playoffs. Though, they don't give a shit at this point. Yeah, they don't care. To, to get, to try, <laughs> but as far as Miller, as far as Miller, I don't see. I don't see Miller. Maybe Besser because Besser's a, Besser is a. Is a UFA after this year, but I, I, I don't know. I don't think Besser is that is going to make that big a difference for them. I mean, they'll have to probably move Jason Zucker back. Uh, he's at five and a half. Uh, they put Brock McGinn on waivers, so that frees up two point seven, uh, two point seven five mil on the on the cap. So they're making. I think they just put a call on somebody else on waivers too. I forget who it was. Um, so they're trying to free it up. And then they, if they need to, they can send Brian Dumoulin, who's a free agent after this year. Um, so they got they got some flexibility here with the cap that they could be able to pull off a JT Miller or a Brock Besser. I would rather have Brock Besser, to be honest with you. 
fun Pittsburgh. I'd I'd rather go after him than JT Miller. But again, you got to pay Jarry at the at Jarry is, is is a UFA. You can't let him walk if you're Pittsburgh, can you? Uh, who's your backup, Casey to Smith? Unless you That's have a I'm trade you in your let... head that you want to make for a goaltender. Yeah, I mean, how do you let Tristan Tristan Jarry is like a uh, all star goalie? How do you let him walk? I mean, I, I understand he's been hurt the last couple of years a lot, and that maybe that goes into their thinking. But boy, you, you let him go—that's a—that you're taking a big chance. I mean, how do you replace a guy like that? I mean, they, it look, really looks like they're going to let a—they're going to—they're going to free up a lot of cap space just in free agency this year. So if they let Dumlin walk, they're going to free up four mil there. If they let Ducker walk, that's five and a half there. So. Even with those two players alone, there's there's your money for Jari. Right. Okay, got it. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. And that's if they're not even involved in the trade. So we'll have to see what the rest is. And then Kasperi Kapanen, you gave up uh, 3.2 mil with him. So that frees up 3.2 3. mil there okay. because um, him going to St. Louis. So now St. Louis has to pick up that contract. Hey, so freed up you- some money there. You think Pittsburgh, though, would have liked to have gotten that first-round draft pick back that they gave up for Kapanen? and Ooh. Probably. That was a, At this that was point, a rough, yes. That was a rough deal <laughs> for them. Yeah. Probably. You talk about teams making um, bad trades. That was a toughie. Uh, Crosby just uh, tied it up, by the way, for Pittsburgh. Of course so he did. Fuck him. Yeah, What's up, A.W.? <laughs> What's up, A.W.? Uh, he's saying go, Leafs, go. Uh, definitely – Hoping that everything pans out. I mean, hey, O'Reilly, he's been uh, he's been going hard for you guys since picking him up. Also, on top of that, he has a couple of questions. One, uh, do you guys think Kyle Dubas is done? No. And then the other, and do you believe only getting past the first round? No. <laughs> the big question, the first round question that has been a controversy for the Leafs since 2004. Um. Well, Dubas. That's the less. I don't. Still the I don't know if he loses. What? Vasilevsky's still a problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean Vasilevsky. He, yeah, he's tough, man. He's a buzzsaw in the playoffs, man. He gets in those modes where it's like you're not scoring and you don't score. Simple as that. <laughs> very, Just very simple. But um. Panthers. I will say this though, if yeah, twice he's got him yeah. twice, Vazzy has. But um, I will say this though to AW. Uh, one thing I will say about the Leafs though, not to go all you know down on the Leafs. Last year when they lost, I didn't buy that. You know, I I had. I actually thought really did. I thought like, wow, the Leafs are actually looking like they're finally going to make that leap. They looked more serious to win that series than they did against Montreal when they had that 3-1 series that they blew. So it's like they had a better shot then than they had ever had before on a really hard team to go up against. I I still think 50-50 coin toss. You know, I know everybody's down on the Leafs because, yes, they lost again in the first round, but – if they take that energy that they had last year, they put it into the playoffs, and they outdo Tampa just just a little bit this time. They might pull off. I'm saying last year was not your round. Let's all them. No, it was more of the the Leafs actually put up one hell of a fight. It was just Tampa beating Vazzy got the job done because they outplayed them. Maybe the Leafs can do it this time. Maddie, there's one problem. I, I think it's – Okay. The bottom line is in a big spot, in a close game, Vasilevsky versus uh, whoever happens to be the goalie that night for the Leafs. Oh, yeah, Samsonov. Samsonov, okay. Vasilevsky against Samsonov in a game seven. Who are you betting on? That's fair. Just saying, uh, it's. I understand. You know, I, I, that, that, I I get that's, it. That's it. Listen, not, if the Leafs, yeah, if the Leafs, I got you. If the Leafs, 
if the Leafs can beat them in five, you know, or in six maybe, okay. But if it's a real tight series and it's, it's a back and forth series, you know, and it comes to an ultimate game seven, or or, or you know, Toronto is a is is a is behind three to two. Can they get that performance out of their goaltender? Because you know Vasilevsky is going to be there every game. You know that, and and you know regardless well, of how good their offense the is, he, he's the he's an equalizer. He, I'll be honest, you know we've seen this happen in the playoffs. There, there's always there's always that moment when finally a team finally breaks through the glass ceiling. It took forever for Tampa to finally win a Stanley. Yes, it did. It took a, you know, who it took, it took a long time for Tampa to finally get that going. You know, they they finally won right after. So, but that took a lot of mistakes. That took a lot of foul ups. That took them getting embarrassed, winning the President's Trophy in the first. Wake them up and say, you no more. No more of this bullshit. We are going out of the first. We are getting out, only going to get out of the first round. We're going to win the whole damn thing. Then they did it again just to celebrate. But it has to happen to Toronto. They can't keep doing this year in and year out. It, it, I mean, we were, sometimes friends last a lot longer than they, you ever thought they would. But again... People last year didn't look so hot in the playoffs. Yes, they went on that run that got them into the finals. But that I know I might win a lot of stuff in a series that happened last year and maybe this year. Well, maybe they're having their own problems. But, again, it comes out slow. Toronto might be able to take advantage of that. You know, if Tampa maybe. can't shut them down. If Toronto takes advantage of that, maybe o maybe O'Reilly gives them the jolt they need, you know, with some leadership. Maybe he's ass and says, "Uh-uh, not no. You guys ain't getting eliminated in the first round while I'm here. Not anymore." You know, it's. I think the possibility's there. You know, I, I, I think you know could Tampa? Yes, they absolutely could. Then we could continue to have that trend, but. I mean, let's let, let's the, let's remember Toronto's here. sick fellas. and tired of getting eliminated in the first round. Let, let's remember here. T Tampa is not the team to really worry about. Is Vasilevsky the uh, uh, an issue? Of course he is. Toronto's gone out, and I think they've shared up their defense for sure. Um, you know, they've been doing it the last couple of years. They went out, and got Giordano last year. This year, they got uh, Luke Shen. They got uh, Eric Gustafson. And there was somebody else they went out and got two on the defensive side. Um, hang on, Jake McCabe. So they sure up the, the the back end for sure. I think they did a much better job of getting depth than they did last year. My my thing with my thing with Toronto is not offense. It's not defense. I think they're one of the better teams up front in the league. I'm not sold on Ilya Samsonov. That's that's my biggest issue. Um, he didn't sell me in Washington, and he didn't sell me in Toronto. I think Toronto could have been a much better off had they signed re-signed Jack Campbell instead of going after um, after Samsonov. He does he doesn't he doesn't wow me. And he's he's he he's I think he's the weak link. Mm -hmm. I think that's the problem. I mean, look, you. I'm going to give you an example, okay? And this was a long time ago, but I'm going to give you an example. Uh, when the Islanders, when the Islanders, not the, was, no, it was the Devils, okay? The Devils, had, I think, were behind the Ottawa Senators three games to two, okay? One of the years they won the Stanley Cup. I can't remember which year. But the bottom line was when it was three to two Ottawa, they had to beat Martin Brodeur, okay? And they had two chances to do it. And I don't remember who their goalie was back then. May have been Ray Emery. I, I just I can't remember right now, but they couldn't do it because they when it when push came to shove. One year. I, I'm I'm trying to was it 2004? Was it their second Stanley Cup or their third? It was I think it was their third Stanley Cup. Oh, it was, it was 2003. 2003. Yeah, 
It was 2003. It was 2003. Yeah. It was, it was the year, because the year after think, that. Was Emery their goaltender? I'm, I'm trying he to remember. Was he, was he the goaltender back then? It was either then? him or Patrick Laleem. May have been Laleem. I think it was Laleem. It may have been Laleem. But, I, yeah, it was, it was Laleem. I think it was it Laleem. Was Laleem. Right. I, I'm pretty sure it was. But the bottom line was, was Laleem, when, when, it came to, when it came down to push to shove, it became Laleem against Brodeur, and Brodeur won. You know, I, I just think that that could happen to Toronto again. I yeah. think it will. I think it will. I think uh, not to, not... not to really hate on AW here, but, you know, uh, first of all, I thought I didn't think uh, Kyle was even going to get any more moves done after the O'Reilly trade. I thought that was going to be it for them. So for him to make three more trades and send bravo to him, the hat's off. He's he's trying to go all out. Um, he's he's doing – listen, he's doing the right thing, and he's doing what, what he has to – what he thinks he has to do. To try to uh, to try to be Tampa Bay, and good for him because he needs. It's not even he Tampa Bay that they have to worry about. They have to worry about Boston. Boston's a team they got to worry about. Well, they're they got to get past Tampa, Tampa Bay, but they got to get ahead of. But they got to. But they got to beat Tampa first before they get a crack at Boston. Uh, that's not necessarily true. The standings could still go anywhere. There's still like 25 games left in the season. Somebody could sneak up on Tampa. You never know. I mean, it's it's not looking good considering Buffalo is the next team in line, but. And Buffalo, Buffalo was losing last time. I looked to the Blue Jackets, <laughs> four to three. They lost that one. They lost. Okay, and did, and Detroit uh, had a little problem tonight with Ottawa, just a little one. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, odds are it's probably going to wind up being Tampa Bay, but yeah, but just a lot of games. There's still a lot of hockey left. There's a lot of ways that this could still wind up. But anyway, point being, you know, it's Dubois did, a, did has done a really good job in my eyes for. Uh, for Toronto, I, I think Toronto will make some noise. I, I don't be surprised. I won't be surprised if they get out of the first round. I, I wouldn't finally get over to hump. I think they are a little bit better defensively than Tampa. I just think Tampa has the edge in goaltending. Sometimes yeah, that plays a the, good thing. Sometimes it doesn't. In the playoffs, sometimes that's really important. Oh, it I is mean, definitely listen, important. Yeah, I mean, look. Vasilevsky last year against Colorado. Colorado completely dominated that series. If it wasn't for Vasilevsky, that would have been a sweep. Except Vasilevsky somehow won two games against that team. Okay, so. You just, you never know. Yeah, AW. Yes, AW. That's pretty yeah. much what we're saying. That's pretty much what we're trying to say in a very nice way. We, we're I not crazy about it. it. What do you mean in a nice way? I just came out and said it. Yeah, I'm not sold we, on Sam, We uh, think he. Samsonoff. We think we don't think he's good enough. I just don't. I don't think he's an elite starter. I just. I don't. I didn't think he yeah. was out in Washington either. They were dumb to get rid Eagle. of. Well, maybe they weren't so dumb to get rid of Hopi. He, he wants Eddie. No, I, he wants Eddie Eagles. I don't think Belfour is coming back anytime soon. I think that he's permanently retired. You think that Belfour was a Maple Leaf, even though I, I don't remember Belfour's memories in overtime was against Eddie Belfour when Ronick scored. So <laughs> the last time the Leafs got out of the first round. Yeah, well, I just you know what I, you you know which one I remember, which may have been the, the worst. The worst one of all time to me was uh, was the James Reimer meltdown. Against Boston, remember that one in Game Seven. Oh, that was bad. I think what was it five yeah. to nothing, and they no. in the third period. That was bad. To go. That yeah, was really was, bad. Yeah, five nothing with ten minutes to go, and Boston scored five goals to tie it up, and then they won six five in in overtime. Swoopy, Swoopy saying. Uh, who did uh, Toronto trade Tuka Rask for? Was it Phil Kessel? No. They did not trade no. Tuka Rask for him. They traded Tuka Rask for Andrew Raycroft, who was an absolute shit show when he got up to Toronto. He had one good year in Boston, and then everyone thought that was going to be the next thing. They traded a late prospect pick, and that pick happened to be Tuka Rask. Aye, yeah. Aye, aye. 
People point to that moment as one of the more painful trades that they lost in franchise history because they absolutely did. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a bad one. <laughs> if it was Phil Kessel, I don't think they would be as, as upset because Phil Kessel actually is a pretty good player. Always has been. Still is. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. Um, Ted's saying, um, you guys think Taves no. gets traded still? Nope. nope. He's uh, he's stepping he's stepping back. He's not All he's right not playing then. the rest of the year. So no, he's 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 not getting traded. He's not okay. He's still feeling symptoms from COVID, and he's still feeling symptoms of what was bothering him a couple of years ago. So he's taking a step back from from hockey. I hope to see him play again. Uh, but yeah, he's not he's not getting traded. Yeah, I think he next next season. Yeah. Uh, no, Ted, I don't think he finishes his career. I don't think the Rangers can resign him. I don't think they they're going to have the cap space unless they unless they're they're able to convince one of their uh, long their guys who have no long term who have long term contracts to uh, to leave. And I doubt that that's going to happen. And I think that's also part of the reason why they didn't give up so much in this deal too, is because knowing that Kane's probably going to walk after this year. Yeah, I mean, they have sixteen million uh, available on their cap next year, but they also have five very important players they have to resign. Okay, Heedle is one, Miller is two, Lafreniere is three. Uh, now, who's the other two? I can't remember off the top of my head. Braden Schneider? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet with Braden Schneider. Oh, Kako and uh, Kako, and who's the other one? That whole kid line is, is – is, the whole kid line, Miller and uh, – who's the other one now? I just can't remember. who they, they, were, they had five guys that they have to re-sign that are, that are RFAs this year, and they, and they can't they, – they have to re-sign them all. And, you know, and unless they don't re-sign any of them, then I guess they could sign, they could sign Kane, and then they, you know, they basically yeah. be giving up their whole third line to keep Kane, which I don't know that that's a very smart thing to do. Okay, so Brad, you have Lafreniere. Uh, you have Philip Heedle. Mm -hmm. You have Keandre Miller. Capo Caco. Capo Caco is on a contract. His contract's actually not up until next season. Or I'm no, sorry, I think he's it's... got another year before he's a he's an RFA. So 23-24 is when his contract's up. Are you sure? I thought it was this year. This I'm looking his, at it. This is his third year, though, with the Rangers. Yeah, he's still got another year. I thought after three years, you're you're a RFA. Well, no, he's not in his entry level contract anymore. Okay. Oh, you know what? You're right. He got two. He got a two year deal. You're right. Mm -hmm. He's on a bridge deal. I forgot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. you don't have to worry about him for another year. But it's it's Lafreniere, uh, Philip Hedl, and Country Miller is really the only three you got to worry about. Okay. Okay. So you have to worry about them. So, and they're sixteen million under. But you know you're going to end up paying Miller probably close to five. You're going to pat. He already has nineteen goals. How many? How much money do you think you're going to you're going to have to pay him? Beatles probably be close to five. So that's ten right there. Okay, and Lafreniere will probably be about two and a half to three. So that's around 12 and a half to 13 mil. So that gives you three million left. You're not going to sign Kane with thir with uh, three million dollars. There's no way Kane signs here for three million dollars. He may he's like not gonna sign for a huge deal, but he's not going to sign for that little. No, he, I don't. He, as much as he likes playing with Panarin, he's not going to do that. I think he still probably gets about five, six, between five and six million a year for, on, on like a three-year deal. Kane, I think that's what he's going to want. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm being realistic. I think that's what it's going to take. And you know, unless the Rangers are willing to uh, let one of the aforementioned guys that I said walk, I thought they had five guys. It's three. Uh, then, then it's not going to happen. Uh, AW saying he get out of the first round. What do they have to do? Well, if the same issue pops up where goaltending winds up becoming the issue, have to get a solid starting goaltender. 
if you can get get the job done in the playoffs, then you shouldn't have any more issues because you got what you need. But if you don't get that goaltender, no, then maybe they talk to problem. the Canucks about. Maybe they talk that's, to the Canucks about Patrick Demko. Demko's not an answer either. No. Hmm. I think they need to fire I, Kyle. Yeah. Dubois. I I'm not, not so sure. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know who they I mean, can get at this point. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I don't it's even all, know if he's available, but all the I don't even know if one or all taken. Yeah. No, you just Pretty got a draft one. Yeah. I'm trying to think of good. Like, maybe. I'm trying to think of who would be like a or, good, like, you know. But. Or you I'm could do what, what, that right now. <laughs> or you could do what um, Dylan would probably absolutely love, and maybe if you're at Toronto in the offseason, you trade for Markstrom, Jacob Markstrom out from Calgary. Get him out of get him out of Calgary and see what he does in Toronto. I mean, we know he could be a, a really good goaltender in this league. It's just I, I just don't think he ever really found his niche in, in Calgary, and yeah, I think yeah, Toronto yeah. has a much better defense. Yeah, that's true. He hasn't been very good in Calgary either, though. But yeah, I'm 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 firing Kyle Dubas. That's that would be my first thing, because obviously this guy's putting together a good roster, but not a good enough roster to get out of the first round. Get rid of that. Bring in somebody new. Get a new voice. And get a get what Maddie said. Get a start. Figure out figure out your goaltending situation. Do you think they upgraded with their goaltending by getting rid of? Uh... Mm. Campbell? I don't think no. so. No. Although, although I will say this, Campbell isn't as good in Edmonton as he was in Toronto. But again, yeah, but Edmonton, symptoms of, a, of a worse defense. defense. Edmonton's mm-hmm. defense is awful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they give up so many high um, quality. Uh, uh, Swoopy saying. It's spooky saying that uh, Bear Hayton has been so underused. He needs to change the scenery. Of course, it's the Coyotes. Eh, sometimes you get. Uh, so, how do you feel about the Kane trade? Well, I mean, the Rangers are going all in. Want to win now? So I think the Rangers have. A, I think the Rangers. Rangers have a golden opportunity now to win the Stanley Cup. They have, they re, they they do now. Whether they go yeah, ahead and do it, the, the one it. thing we met, I did mention, the one thing I did mention to the guys before the show started, AW, is that uh, I was concerned that the Rangers may not be uh, tough enough uh, to to win to win the Stanley Cup. That that still is a concern to me, but I think the Rangers can win the Stanley Cup. There's no question about that now. With him, yeah, with him, you look at their top nine. Their top nine is as good as any top nine in the NHL right now. Forward wise, if you, the kid line is your third line uh, between between Panarin, Trocek, and uh, and Kane on the second line, and then Sabanajad, Kreider, and Tarasenko on the first line. That's as good a three lines as you're going to have in the NHL as far as uh, your top three lines. I love and hate the trade. Well, yeah, if you don't want the Rangers. All right, gents. Um, let's see here. Let's, let's continue. Um, we'll move forward here. It's that we saw in this year. Um, one of the other ones, Edmonton acquiring defenseman Matthias Ekholm and six-round pick in the 2024 NHL draft for the National Predators in exchange for defenseman reach a first round pick in the 2023 NHL draft and a fourth round pick in the 2024 NHL draft. Obviously Nashville is very much in the let's go get stock draft picks and get some young players here because um, yeah, they've been making deals pretty, pretty heavily here, which makes sense. You know, Nashville's agent is kind of looking to, you know, 
stuff for the future. But yeah, um, Nashville is but Nashville is, is uh, you could put a fork in them. They're done. They've been in this trade deadline. Do you see them going on another run to the Western Conference Finals, or do you think that this is but is pretty heavily reliant on their star players and back and bite them in the ass? Is still an electric team in the world. I mean, that, that's tough to say, Manny, because. I'm still not you. Ekholm is a solid top four D man. He's not the answer. Um, this team's still going to be heavily reliant on that offense to try and outscore people. It is. I don't know what it is. Um, you know, I can't. Re- I can't really think of anybody else on that defense right now outside of Ekholm that is a legit threat. So to me, I don't think they're going to get that far. Um, I mean, Vegas is playing great hockey right now, despite not having Mark Stone. They're still playing really solid. Um, Colorado is on a tear, last I saw. Uh, I could be wrong about that. I could have heard it wrong. I think they've won 10 of their last 12, haven't they? That's what I thought I heard. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I think they're on a tear. Um, Kings are playing really good hockey. You have... I mean, the current. I think they were lose. They were losing five four to the Jets, but I was like, are having a night, saying uh, four goals on four shots for Anze Kopitar. Holy Dallas is smokes. Dallas is a threat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Dallas and uh, I think Dallas and Colorado are looking like to me that, or maybe Winnipeg, are, are looking like the the, uh, two, the three best teams in the West right now. Yeah, Ted, that, that deal's done. I know Edmonton was trying to get uh, – was trying to work out something to get at, at Carlson, but they just couldn't do it. Yeah, his he's making too much. He's – unless – Sharks are saying unless they get wowed, Eric Carlson's probably going to stay put. But I think Ekholm kind of set the market here. I don't think teams are going to get as much as they want for somebody like Jacob Chikrin. Um, so I don't think Arizona is going to get what they want back. No, they want two first round picks. That's and nobody's going to give them that for him. They're going to get they're going to get a nice return for Chikrin, but I don't think they're going to they're going to they're not going to get two first round picks. They they got to get off of that. He's he's good, but he's not uh, not that good. My God, that's but you got first remember, round picks is crazy. Twenty four years old still. And he's got term on his contract, so they're going to want a little bit more for that. And I don't blame him for asking for it. Are they going to get it? Probably not. But you know, he's a solid. Oh yeah, they can ask for anything they want. I mean, obviously. Yeah, he's. I'm not worried about you know the return for you know them asking for two first. I think it's justified, but with the way the market's been at this trade deadline, I just don't think it's going to happen. See, my problem is he's on the Coyotes, and that that's a problem. Anybody that's on the Coyotes, getting somebody from the Coyotes to me is a problem. Unless it's Clayton Keller, it's a problem. The only thing that worries me with Chikrin is his injury history, but I wonder how much of that is actually him just not wanting to play. But, again, I, he's a 24-year-old top-pairing defenseman. I'm not – they'll get a nice return. I just don't think they're going to get what they want. Right, and Swoopy said, talks about Jesse Puljujarvi finally getting traded to uh, the Canes. Boy, that yeah, guy is another. He's another over. Carolina he's another team. overrated. Well, player. traded to Carolina. Yeah, mm-hmm. big deal. I wouldn't say he's overrated. Yeah, he's to Carolina and the. Uh, he's in a bad system. Yeah, the the it's Oilers got uh, rights to unsigned draft choice for Patrick. Yeah, that was a minor deal. It's it's a change of scenery for him. He needs um, it. I think he'll be fine. He'll work out well in Rod Rod Brindamore's system. It works for just about everybody. Yeah. Uh, Jay, I think the Leafs will flip Gustafson in the first. Yeah, they did get Boston's first in that in the Washington deal for Gustafson. 
what else do you think they could get, Jason? What do you think? Uh, what do you think? What do you think the Leafs could do with that? And and what do you think that they still need? Because I know they 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 flipped uh, Pierre Engvall to the Islanders earlier today as well. So let us know what 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 do you think? What do you think they could get for that? And what do you think they need? So while Jason uh, he types in his response to that, um, which thank you by the way for all the comments you're throwing out and everybody. Else. Else there in the fan. Speaking of them, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs acquiring defenseman Jake McCabe, forward Sam Lafferty, conditional 24 NHL draft, and the conditional fifth round 25 NHL draft from the Chicago Bulls, for Joey Anderson, forward Pavel Gugolov, a in the 2025 NHL draft, and a second round pick in the 2026 NHL draft. So another one of those moves where obviously stop on defense and also getting forward depth as well. Do you see these moves? Like I said, you know, I know we had this talk a few moments ago. Do any of these moves change your mind at all? Or do you still think it? I didn't catch that last part, Maddie. You cut out again. Ugh. Um, uh, I was just saying, ultimately, do they change your mind? Or is it still just because without the goalie, doesn't matter? Well, I mean, there's still a couple goalies available on the trade bait list. Um, the one guy I didn't think about was Jonas Corp- Corposalo from Columbus, who was actually scratched tonight for trade purposes. Um, and I know Jason was saying, um, do you think the Leafs will flip them? I, I don't necessarily know if they will flip them, but if I if they do, I wouldn't mind them seeing them going after a guy like Corpus Salo. Uh, I mean, again, apparently I think these Leafs fans here agree that, that Samsonov isn't going to be the guy to get it done. Well, is Matt Murray going to get it done? Because he's comes off a, a long-term injury reserve soon. <laughs> Matt Murray can't get anything done anymore. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I, I agree with you. I'm just wondering. I mean, that's are the Leaf fans banking on him? I I wouldn't. Yeah, no, I wouldn't either. I don't think he's uh, – he's he, he was great in Pittsburgh. He hasn't been able to times. do anything since Flurry hasn't been there to hold his hand. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. Well, here's my thing. Um, so, Corpus Allo is having a rough year. Obviously, Columbus is having a rough year. Not, not solid defensively enough. And the offense has kind of been inconsistent. Uh, he's coming off a year last year where he had a great, well, maybe not a great, but, you know, he put up, um, and he's having a better year this year than last year, actually. A, a significant um, goals against are up a point, and his save percentage is much higher. So maybe maybe if you put Corpus Allo in a, in a system – like Toronto, where they have a good defensive front, I think he's better than Samsonov, and he's definitely better than Matt Murray. Where you can go after Cam Talbot, I think either guys could be potentially be an upgrade. I mean, I'm still not a big, still not a big Cam Talbot guy, but I think he's a better answer than Ilya Samsonov. Yeah, I would agree with you. Uh, Ted wants to know, besides Friedman, who are the go-to followers for breaking trades? Friedman's good. Um, Frank Saravelli is also another good one. You can also go with Darren Dredger or Pierre Lebron. Any of those guys, they're all good followers on Twitter. Emily Kaplan's pretty good, too. I don't follow her. Maybe I should give her a follow. Yeah, she's pretty good. She, she's usually right on the money. Uh, Jay, uh, able to deal with that Murray because he is on LTIR. I yeah, believe. you can't move anybody in the LTIR. 
You, I don't even think you can move a guy out on the IR, let alone the LTIR. You can trade injured players as long as they're getting ready to come back. Let's see, Swoopy also saying, is Washington giving up their very old team? Or are they the NHL? I don't know if they're the oldest well, in the NHL, but um, I don't know. I can answer that. I, yeah, they are. <laughs> Let's be. Let's be honest, okay? They're they're uh, we all we all said at the beginning of the year he they're uh, they're old they're really old and uh, it, it's time for them to turn the page on a lot of these guys. Yeah, I mean Washington's done. Washington's sitting in seventh place in the wild card race underneath Detroit, Ottawa, Florida, and Buffalo. They are and, two games over five hundred, and they only have sixty four points. Yeah, and they also have played about three or four more games than all these other teams. So they're they're pretty much they're pretty much done. Yeah, I think and, it's you know the, the guys that they the guys that they traded they from what I've heard they they weren't going to sign resign those guys anyway. So no, they they need to focus on some of these younger guys like Alexiev. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they need to give uh, mm. our buddy Rich Rich yeah. Elon get it a shot. <laughs> oh yeah. All right then, gents. So one more uh, big trade to think on. One more big trade from this side. Um, the New Jersey Devils acquiring forward Timu Meyer and Timur Ibrahimov, uh, defenseman Scott Harrington, and sent. Terry Hull and a 2024 NHL draft from the San Jose Sharks in exchange for forwards Fabian Zetterland and Andreas Janssen, defenseman Shakir Mukbadulin, and Nikita Otyuk, Okotyuk, actually is how you say that, and NHL draft, a conditional second round pick in the 2024 NHL draft, and a seventh round pick in the transitional picks going back and forth in these deals nowadays instead of just the actual pick it's Islander uh, the, the, the Devils basically traded uh, all their all their all their prime assets in their in their minor league system to get Timo Meyer so they had better make not they better make sure that they sign him I love this move for I mean, the Devils. I think it's a great move. Yeah, me too, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> it's it's a win now move. And I think uh, I'm not a hundred percent sold that Timo even resigns. I think again, like I said earlier in the show, I think they're gonna wait till the offseason to see how some things play out with certain players before they go after Timo again. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with how, where they finish in, in the playoffs too. I think they do have a, a legit chance now to make some real noise in the, in the Eastern conference, but um, I just, I don't know. I just. Any one of six teams can, can win that division. I uh, can win that conference right now. Yeah. I just, I, I love this move. I, I can definitely see the devils resigning him, but they're going to have to sacrifice some players. So, gents, question has officially solidified the Devils as a more permanent part. If they re-sign Timu Meyer, let's just throw that out there. They re-sign Timu. Does that team off contender? Also, does this put the Devils in the cup talk? Yes. Opinion. I think so. I think it makes them a, a contender. Do I think it, it solidifies them almost a guaranteed spot? I still think they have a little bit of room. I think they need to, to prove I think Mackenzie Blackwood specifically still needs to prove something that he can he can be that Stanley Cup caliber goaltender. But I think at the as the roster stands right now, I think for them Eastern it's Eastern Conference finals are bust. And I think that's fair. 
I think that's fair with, with where they are. Um, Rangers are a tough team. I don't necessarily think they'll be able to beat them. Um, I think the Rangers are, are with the, with the Patrick Kane move, obviously is now the favorite in the East for the, for the Stanley cup. But I think the devils make some noise. I, and I think if it's, if it's anything less than the finals after this trade, which I think they really didn't give up a lot to get them. No, they didn't. It's, it's Eastern conference finals or bust. They have they have a good roster right now to to win right now. Um, it's just a matter of can they get over the Rangers? Can they get over the Canes? Can they get over, they the get over Boston? The, they you can know. get over the Canes, but I don't know about the Rangers. I mean, I still think they can get over the Rangers. I don't think the Rangers are unbeatable, but I think the Rangers. Oh, they're are not. Un- they're team. not. The Rangers are not unbeatable. Trust me, <laughs> they're, not, they're not unbeatable. <laughs> the, 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 you know, um, at this point, at, at this point, the Rangers have improved massively with this trade they made today. Oh yeah, I tell you, it could be a, will be a crazy playoff matchup if it winds up being the Devils versus the Rangers in the first round. It's inevitable. And then if say the Islander decided to show up in the second round and they drew the uh the Rangers or something like that. Holy shit. That'd be Oh good be, lord. <laughs> From one rival to the next. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that the Islanders are even gonna make it. I mean Pittsburgh won today and the Islanders lost in a shootout. So uh where where does that put the standings now? I'll tell you one second. You get the update here. Okay, so uh, they're both in a wild card spot right now. Was there any? uh, uh, Okay, so they're both in the wild card still. Mm -hmm. So, um, was you guys wanted to bring up? Uh, There was a couple. We talked about Timo. One of the more under the radar trades I wanted to talk about was the Winnipeg Jets adding Nino Nita Rider. Thought that was a really good under the radar move. Nashville got a second round pick for him. Nino having a great year in Nashville in his first year. Um, Eighteen goals going going to to Winnipeg. You know that's something they needed. It's, oh, his, absolutely. Obviously, that's his playmaking ability is is really good, and and he's he's really found he really found himself again in Nashville. I think, and you know putting him in in Winnipeg where they need some offensive help. Outside of you know, obviously their big three, I think it's it's a great move for Winnipeg, and I think it's really going to help elevate that offense and could potentially really elevate their penalty, their power play as well, um, as they need a little bit of help there too. And uh, I see Swoopy's comment, and uh, you know we'll see if we'll see if Boston is even there, Swoopy. I don't know if they will be. And I don't think they're going to be playing in the playoffs the way they have been in the regular season. Yeah, a couple other trades here, real quick. Um, All we right. talked about Cleo Harvey. We talked about Ekholm. Um, another under the radar move that could be good is uh, Vancouver trading Luke Shen to Toronto for uh, a third third round pick this year. Um, again, Luke Shen having having a really good year, going back to where it all started. I think in a situation that he's in now with Toronto, I think it, I think it's a good situation. I think he helps definitely helps make that defense stronger. I thought he was having a really solid year in Vancouver, um, so I think it's a good move under good the radar. Depth. He's a good, good depth, depth move. defenseman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Other than that, a lot of these moves today we talked about the big and, splash. Oh, what about uh, Evgeny Dadunov? Oh yeah, I forgot about him. Oh yeah, he went to Dallas. He had a goal last night. What was the return for him, Maddie? Man. Not about uh Denny Gurionov. Oh, they moved him. They were trying to move him. Yeah. I think that's a good yeah. move for them. Guriana needed a, a change of scenery big time, and he'll get one in, in Montreal. Wow, that's a good that's a that's a good hockey trade. Right I think that's a good hockey trade for both sides. Both sides went out on that one. 
So here's one for you. This right. Sabres Dallas, uh, you know, making a sleeper move. Guys hmm. think that Buffalo makes a move. That's. Yeah, I'm surprised we, we haven't do. seen any. Uh, we haven't seen anything from them yet. They've been strangely quiet, and you know, I think they they should be all in to try to make sure they make the playoffs this year. Yeah, I um, I think Buffalo does make a move because they're only three points out of the playoff spot now. Um, I think they're 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 really close. I I really don't know what they really need. I mean, obviously, scoring depth will be huge. Try and get Tage Thompson some some help there. Or they could uh, use another defenseman. I don't know. I mean, defensively, they've been playing Ravis, really well. Rasmus Deline's been hurt, too, which is not helping them. No. I mean, defensively, I think they've been pretty good with their big three back there. I mean, obviously, I know Darlene's hurt, but... When he when he's been on the ice, him, Owen Power, and Henry Yukiharu have been really good. Yes, they have. And their goaltending situation's not bad either. I don't know. Maybe maybe go out go after a depth piece or something. Maybe get some depth scoring or, or something. Um, that's the only thing I could really think of. I mean, they're still a developing team. You don't want to really break any of those young guys up yet. Um, asking, you know, will Klingberg be traded? Yeah, I think he gets traded Friday. I think uh, Kevin Shattenkirk gets traded on Friday. Uh, I don't want to see it happen, but I think Adam Henrique gets traded on Friday as well. Um, that one will break my heart. They think that they can get a bigger return. Actually, they've been told they can get a bigger return for Adam Henrique if they retain some of his salary. So I wouldn't be surprised if he... Um, if he winds up getting moved too, those are those are the three that I think are most likely to get moved to Anaheim. What's up, Willie? By the way, Ryan Reeves scored his first goal of the season tonight. Hey, Wills. Hey. I, I also want to mention nice. one one thing that we haven't that that Good for obviously him. is not that big a deal, but I got one thing to mention, guys. The new NHL fighting champion. Is now Milan Lucic. I don't know if you got to see it, but he he knocked out. He got the TKO uh, against uh, what's his name, the guy on the Colorado. Oh yeah, um, I saw that the other day. Yeah, uh, I can't remember his name now. <sighs> yeah, something something McDermott or something like McDermott. that. McDermott, yeah, McDermott, yeah, McDermott. He he. Uh, they were going back and forth, and then uh, Lucic got him with one and, and knocked him down, and that was the end of the fight. So <laughs> I have I, I just wanted to anoint Milan Lucic as the new NHL uh, heavyweight champion. Fuck Lucic, he's such a shithead. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, he can still he's an old man, but you know what, he can still go. Yeah, that's the only thing he can do now. This is true. <laughs> he used to be. He used who's to the, be a pretty good scorer uh, with Boston, mm, but now uh, who's the big Marchant, Reeves, or Tom I, Wilson? Who's the best of them? Well, Tom Wilson got his ass kicked by Reeves a couple of years ago when he was in Vegas, and uh, Re and Tom Wilson wouldn't even was like a little kitty cat when uh, they were playing the Rangers when he had when Reeves was on the team, so. Reeves Reeves would be ahead of Wilson. I don't know about it. Who was the other one you said? I said Marchant and Lucic along with uh, along with Wilson and uh, Reeves. I hate Re I Reeves hate would all, all four Reeves would crush all of, would crush all of them in a fight. <laughs> he would kill all those guys. The only two guys that Reeves can't beat right now are McDermott and uh, and Lucic. <laughs> okay. Lou Cheech is a crisper wannabe. <laughs> uh, uh, he's not. A, he's not the player Chris Spronger was. No, I, but uh, as far as fighting, uh, and, and I, that would be a pretty good one. That'd be a pretty good one. I wouldn't sell Lou Cheech short. He is one. 
tough ombre. By the way, Chris Pronger still looks like he could play. Yeah, yeah for, at his age, it's three more. Yeah. All right. He looks great. He looks like he's still in play. Chance, so, um, so, I think that'll wrap up our trade review. So now we go into the third period. And the third period is brought to you by Fana, the best way to enjoy fantasy sports. If uh, you want to get in on the action, they did have a daily NFL contest, but now that season's over. You have, of course, the NBA and the NHL going on right now. We're getting close. Both expect a big money to that. Also, when the MLB, their preseason's gotten going, so the season will be here, here before you get in on those daily contests. You can get in on those as soon as that gets up and running. And if you use the promo code A2D, you can get 5,000 bonus points, which is a $50 value. All you got to do is go to fanup.app. And uh, sports, there's money to be had in there. All right, then, gentlemen, so on to the third period we go. And uh, while this one is labeled Flyers Troubles, I think we, we dived into a lot of the Flyers Troubles in the first period. We put all. Uh, uh, anything around the league that you guys want to bring up besides things from the trade deadline? Anything business-related or what have you? Can we still talk about some rumors? Do you still want to do that? Cause I got some juicy stuff. Yeah, go. For it. go. All right. So like I like I mentioned All before, right, Penguins are in on Brock Besser. I think that's a big one. Um, here's here's one that we can actually make Flyers related. So we've we've I stated earlier in the show that that JVR is destined, maybe destined for Minnesota, uh, but they have announced that they may be a leak in who may be coming back the other way. And that's Jordan Greenway. Um, and this is according oh, to Puck Report. Nice, on, that would be a nice trade for you guys. If you and that's that. according wow. to Puck Report NHL on, on Instagram. Uh, Greenway stats for this season, though, 43 games. He's got six points, 26 penalty minutes. But here's why I, I, really like, I would really like this deal for the Flyers. One, he's going to add grit. He does have scoring upside. I think we saw that scoring upside a little bit last year. He's got two years left on this contract at $3 million a year. You're going to save $4 million just on this trade alone for JVR. And with this deal, you may not actually have to retain any of JVR salary. That would be a great deal for, for the Flyers. I think that's I like a big Jordan, one. I like Jordan Greenway. He's a, he's a real tough defenseman. And, uh, you know, you guys really could use a physical a physical player like that. He can score. I don't know why he's not uh, more involved in the offense this year, uh, but uh, he—I've always liked him as a player. He's—he's he's a nightmare to play against. And you know, you really could use uh, some guys on your back line who uh, who, are, who, are, who have an edge and are tough to play against because that's something you don't really have right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the entire Minnesota roster too. So the the offense isn't has been down for all of them, but. Again, I think defensively, I think they, they've been all right. But, you know, to add JVR to Minnesota, you, you bring in a guy who's pretty solid on the power play, who's strong in front of the net. You know, he'll get his goals that way. He's not a guy who's really going to score off his shot, as uh, most Flyers fans know. But um, I think that would be a really good return, or at least a good piece in return for uh, JVR. Maybe you get a pick or two also to go with him, but – I think Jordan Greenway would be a nice return for, for JVR to Philly. I think he would fit it nicely. I think the, the, the fan base would really enjoy his style of play because he does play a blue-collar, hard-nosed game. He's mean. He's mean, and he's good defensively. Mm -hmm. Okay, The offense will come. He's, he's got some offensive ability. Again, I don't know what, what happened this year, why he's not scoring more and getting more involved in the offense. But uh, that guy, that guy is uh, – is, is a tough guy to play against. And you really could use a little a little sandpaper on your back line. Your back line is way too soft. And moving on, we have um, 
So I made this before the Ekholm trade broke. I did all this research before all that happened. So some of this is I'm changing, literally changing on the fly. So earlier it was reported that the Oilers were in on Chikrin, Gavrikov, and Ekholm. Ekholm being option number two. Chikrin being obviously the primary option and Gavrikov being option number three. So now that Ekholm's off the board, two questions here for you boys. One, is Edmonton done dealing for defensemen? And two, if they do, do you see them going after Chikrin or Gavrikov? If not, where do you think these guys are going to go? Gavrikov is, a good, is, is probably... Uh... It's probably somebody they could get realistically. I just, unless Arizona decides to uh, lower their demands, I don't think Edmonton's going going to get going to get him. Maddie, um, all right. So players again are Jacob Chikrin and Vladislav Gabrikov. Hmm. I think maybe Buffalo might be in on them. Like you said, Brad, they've been awfully in on this the whole time, and that's why we haven't heard anything from them. I think they're going to do something. I Buffalo, so Buffalo really wants to make the playoffs, and you know what? Their you know their fans really want it too. Even if they get slaughtered in the first round, they want to get in the playoffs, and for that young team. For them to make the playoffs and, and get that experience and uh, be able to see that they, in fact, can do it would be huge for the franchise. Um, yeah, Jason, appreciate you, buddy. Right. Hope to see you What's going on? A little bit of excitement. Yep. Thanks, Jason. Um, but excitement building on them. It would not be too hard of a sell to go to Chick and go a Gabber be they can work out a deal to go to Buffalo. Buffalo offloaded a lot of co- a lot of contracts and a lot of sound. Need to have those players around. I think that would do them wonders because yeah, it's a good sneaky move. Everybody Kane and others, they would have Landon Chikrin and Gabakov. And they still have seventeen million in cap space. Yeah, they could easily do it cap in, in cap wise for sure. So, for Buffalo to make this work, it's going to be actually really, really easy for them. Um, they have really nobody to worry about as far as who they have to sign as a uh, RFA, um, aside from maybe Kale Clegg, um, Rasmus Asplin. Could be another another guy who they may may have to worry about. Everyone else they can let walk. Um, Zegman uh, Jurgensen could probably walk at the end of the year. Kyle Oposo is probably going to walk at the end of the year. Vinny Hinnestros is probably going to walk at the end of the year. Um, and defensively, I think they're in pretty good shape. Like I said, Owen Power, Henry Yukaharu. Rasmus Dahlin, they're going to have Ilya Labushkin for another year, who I think is having a pretty solid year for them. They just got Riley Stillman. Riley Stillman is the guy that I was thinking of that they just got. He's he's not a bad player. Yeah, I mean. He's more of a depth player, but, you know. Either one of those two guys, I really believe, it, one of those two guys is going to wind up in Ottawa. And I know I said it was probably going to be well, Ottawa's going to do something because they moved a lot of salary. Mm-hmm. They have four million available, four point seven. I believe I I do generally believe Ottawa is going to go in on a defenseman. I like who they have as far as like their their young um, like the young core to build around. You know, obviously you have Thomas Shabbat, he's twenty six years old. Artem Zub, at twenty seven years old. Those are like your core two guys there. I'm not sold on Travis Hamanick. I don't think he's he is what he was in, in Calgary when he was really at the peak of his game. 
Jake Sanderson, he's 20 years old. Eric Branson, he's 23. These guys still need a little, little development. If they can go out and get a guy like Jacob Chikrin, which I think they're going to do, I think he's going to be the guy for them. That absolutely ups them, and I think it's a move they can make to help push them to the playoffs. They're only five points out of a playoff spot. It's not like they're far out. And offensively, I think they've been really good offensively this year. You know, you got Tim Stutzel doing his thing. Brady Kachuk being Brady Kachuk. Alex DeBrinkett being Alex DeBrinkett. And the one guy that I I think he's having a phenomenal year is Claude Giroux. He's got yep. 25 goals this year. Yep. When was the last time he had 25 goals in Philly? It's been a while. How many points does he have this year? Uh, give me a second. I'll tell you. I'm cu- yeah, I'm curious because I know he's had a pretty good year. He's having a he's having a really good year. Yeah, he's people having a resurgent. Roll him out. Yeah, a resurgent year for him. He's got 60 points. Wow, that's good. That's good. You know, sometimes some guys just need a change of scenery. I think mm-hmm. Giroux is definitely one. 25 goals, 35 assists for the season for Claude Giroux. So Can't I think if that. they can solidify that defense, I think they're going to be all right. If they can hold on to Cam Talbot, I think they will be a playoff team. Ottawa? Mm-hmm. Yeah, how many points out of the playoffs are they right now? Five. If that's it? What about the games in hand? That that situation. Uh, I think it's including them right now. Yeah, it's still five. Okay, so I think they won tonight. Ottawa won, yeah. Yeah, so Ottawa won. Pittsburgh is finishing Pittsburgh up their won. game. You said the it's, Islanders lost in overtime. Yeah, the Islanders lost in a shootout. I think Florida lost earlier too. No, Florida. Florida won. They did win. Yeah. I haven't seen the score. I haven't seen front through the scores in a while. I'm too busy paying attention to the Calgary Boston game. I'm not, I'm not looking at the scores anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's still two to well, one. Ted's uh, saying Flyers um, are going to become the Charlestown Chiefs between all the non skilled goons we're going to have on our team. Lose, move up that lottery. Yeah, but Jordan Greenway does have some skill. Jordan Greenway is a nice player. But outside yeah. of that, you know, this is all stuff that we've talked about. You know, Hayes linked to the Avalanche, Wild, and Canes. Them willing to retain salary. Henry could pull about a second-round pick if Anaheim retains 50% of his salary. Um, Klingberg and Sam Bennett being linked to Colorado. So the Avalanche are, are looking to make a move here, uh, weighing their options to try and improve a little bit. So other than that, there's not not a whole lot of rumors going around, believe it or not. There'll be a whole bunch of new oh, ones right tomorrow. Though. So, um, oh, yeah. you, can bet, you can bet that. Probably. So, with that, I was out of uh, this third period. One thing I do want to throw out there is that um, Warner Bros. Uh, officially is pulling out with, with AT&T out of regional. So, Vex, if you have root sports, which means if you're a Kraken fan, a Penguins fan, a Vegas fan, and I believe one other team is also on Root Sports, that affects you, basically. So the regional deal will, because they're also filing for a Chapter 7 bankruptcy on top of it. So that's two local states that are officially of regional sports altogether. So not just affecting the NHL, but the other leagues as well. Did we mention Barbashev going to Vegas? Oh, yeah. That's a good under-the-radar move, too. Yeah, I think we forgot to mention that one. because I thought that was a pretty good move by by Vegas getting him. I mean, he's a sneaky kind of pretty good player that that can definitely help Vegas. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah, uh, I think that pretty much covers it with the bar sports thing and the other room talked about. Um, and yeah, Vegas there cup because they've, they've been to the third round three times now and they've walked away in 
and last year they missed the playoffs. So it's do or die time for Vegas here. They've been wheeling and dealing to try and win their cup. They got to do it now, or they're never going to do it. At least in the near. Okay, and move on to the shootout, and that is brought to you by or travel. Whose main job it is 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 your dreams. Very, very simple, very, very easy, and just carefree. Because you know what? Life stresses you out sometimes. You got a billion things going on. You need to get a one. You just need relax. You need to go to your happy place. And guess what? Alonzi Travel will do that for you. You don't have to plan it out. You don't have to go through the stress of booking the hotel, planning the flight. This crap that just adds more to the stress load. Let them take care of it for you. Their travel agents can get you to the vacation of your dreams. Disney, Universal, wherever your heart calls to, their talented team and their travel experts will create the custom vacation for a lot of travel, carefree, stress-free. Let them worry about planning your vacation. You just take care of your day and and then before you know it, your vacation's on the horizon. Pack up. Get on the flight, head to your house, all taken care of. All right, then, gentlemen, we go into the shootout, and we start with the so far. So, gents, what do you think is the best trade? Brad, I have an interesting but maybe not so interesting and maybe pretty obvious choice that you're probably going to make on this one. <laughs> So we'll start with you. What do you think is the best trade that has been made so far for the for this trade Patrick, deadline? Patrick Kane, obviously. I think that was a, a great trade for the Rangers. I, I think that that puts them uh, that that puts them in the in an elite class, and that gives them an opportunity to win the cup. So, by the way, am I seeing this right that the Flames are out shooting Boston forty three to eleven, or am I hallucinating? <laughs> Are they? The They're Bruins only have 11 shots? In the third period, yeah. I think it's – no, it's not – I am hallucinating. It's 44 to 11 in shots on goal. And the Bruins are at 2 to 1, by the way. I'm no, here. it's 2 to 2. <laughs> Calgary just scored. Yeah, Dylan Dubé. <laughs> yeah. Calgary, okay. 44 to 11. 44 to 11. <laughs> Yeah, everybody wants to talk about how great the Bruins are. Yeah, okay, it's two to two. I get it, but you know what? Forty-four to eleven. <laughs> how in the world do you get outshot like that? Obviously, the entire team is clearly having an off night, except for the goalie. <laughs> except for well, Olmark so... <laughs> is un Olmark is unbelievable. I I I know that, but Jesus, forty-four to eleven. It's like it's one freaking game. He's like, calm your, calm it down, Brad. Freaking game, <laughs> Ryan. For Ryan Swoop, forty-four to eleven. Okay, me, Brian, and Maddie can go out there and play, and you know we could get outshot forty-four to eleven too. <laughs> That's all possession. The fact that we would get eleven shots on them. Yeah, that would if, be we, if we got yeah. 11 shots on, the, we got flames, 11 shots on, <laughs> on the flames, that would be pretty incredible, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think you yeah. understand my point. Though. <laughs> right. I don't I think we get two goals, you. though. I think yeah, Markstrom. No, we, yeah, I don't think we can score on Markstrom. No, no, that's not going to happen. I don't know. Markstrom's been pretty bad this year. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I mean, to give up two goals and 11 shots when the other goalie's given up. Excuse me, it's now 45 to 11, guys. 45. So I just, just wanted to make sure that everybody is. Ted's two. saying the. 3 2, Calgary. 3 2. Now oh, it's 3 2. There you go. Uh, now it's, by the way, the shots on goal are now 46 to 11. Dylan will be happy. Dylan and Peltier finally. Uh... Starting to make an impact here. Yep. Yep. Mm. 
Oh, uh, Brian. Nice passion for too. Oh, that was just a bit. Did Boston knock that in? Man, was that is that an own goal? I might have gone off the skate, but no, 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 no. That was a beautiful pass from uh, Huberto to uh, to Pelletier. Wow, what a pass! Did you see mm -hmm. that? Whoa! I mean, he had a great shot. He, I mean, he had he had the uh, the the, ner the the calmness. To Huberto is another guy, by the way, guys that I think might get traded. I've heard his name on a lot. I haven't heard his name at all until right now. No, I've heard his name a lot, Huberto. I know he, he, the Rangers were talking about him centering the fourth line because he don't he's he 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 makes league minimum right now, and like half the league is after him. Jonathan Huberto is not making league the minimum. Fact that they trade for him. Wait, maybe I got the wrong guy then. Who is it that who is it that uh, that used to play for Florida? That uh, is is making league. That's making the minimum that everybody's after. It's a tough center. I, I'm thinking of the wrong person. Oh, uh, Sam Bennett. No, not Sam Bennett. Oh, Jesus, who was it? Who was uh, it? Damn, now I can't remember. Used to play for. Used to play. Uh, used to be a big deal in Florida, and then uh, Bukestad. Bukestad, I think. Oh, Nick Bukestad. Yeah. Yeah, he's in Arizona. Uh, yeah. He was actually I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about Huberto, guys. It wasn't Huberto. It was, it's Bukestad, but he uh, <laughs> close. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. It was a it was a Panther. I just got the wrong one. But uh, yeah, that he's another one. He's a fourth line center, and uh, everybody's after him because he's making league minimum. Uh, Bry, what do you think has been the best nope. trade so far for this trade deadline? Um. If we're talking about value for value. Oh, man, that's tough. And I'm the one that came up with this question. Um, <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, right? Uh, Ryan O'Reilly, that, that deal, that, that deal wasn't a bad deal. No, that was a good deal. Yeah. No, it was not. Um, as far as value goes, probably the Timo Meyer deal. Like, if we're talking like value for value, I thought that was a good one. You okay? Um. Yeah, I'm looking at the at the trade tracker here on TSN. That's really the one that's that sneaks out, you know, really sticks out. Um, the Dennis Guryanov and Evgeny Dadanov trade was I thought was a really good one. Not an earth shaking move, but a move that really benefited both teams. Um All right then. So yep. Timu Meyer, uh, with that deal, which yeah, I could see that because the Sharks get back. Um, a good solid prospect in uh, Fabian Sutherland. The others are kind of unproven. Well, the one is most likely, yeah, he's the one that I think was the big get for picks. Mm -hmm. The other ones, one's playing in the KHL, so he hasn't even been in the NHL. The other one's played only two games and highly doubtable he'll ever. So, yeah, that would be the big get right there. Um, as for me, I would say the deal, uh, the deal that I would throw out there, I, you know, I really did like that Evgeny Dadmo deal. I, I did like that when I saw it, I thought, oh, slick move by Dallas. I, I really like what Dallas is doing. They're, under the radar, very sleeper, kind of, you know, putting together a pretty damn solid team. I mean, they already had a solid team to begin with, but they're just shoring up things that they need to shore up. And obviously, there's still time to do a few more things. I really like what Dallas is doing. They're, they're really trying to make themselves the team to beat in the Central. And the good work, they might very well become the team to beat in Central. Actually, they might already be. Quite frankly, 
come to think about it, since Colorado hasn't exactly wowed everybody this year. And what was the one thing, Matty, that we've been talking about most of the season with the Dallas Stars? It's scoring depth. You go out and you get Evgeny Dadnov, who has that scoring ability, has that depth ability. He's, he's, he's exactly what they're looking for as far as adding scoring depth. You know, he's a third line, third line winger. You can't be unhappy with that move if you're a Dallas Stars fan. No, absolutely. Absolutely not. They had a really slick move right there. Really great to sure up some offense. Yeah, I, I really do like what Dallas is doing here. They're going to be uh, – I'll keep my eyes on them when the playoffs get up and running because they may very well make a run. All right, then we move on to the lead, the uh, active team that you've seen in this trade deadline so far. Um, I mean, I guess the least active would have to be the Kraken doing anything, at least for me. The Kraken did make one trade right at the beginning. Megna for uh, one, but I I, mean, I, I think I mean, they, they did kicked, do that. Trade. Yeah, they, they, they kind of kicked um, it off. Okay, no, that's die. Okay, well, I, I just wanted to mention right. I did get Megan, which is not a big trade. That's all right. All right, that's true. That's true. You're right, Brand. You're all right. I'm not gonna. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I mean, right. at this point, there's been a lot of inactive teams. I'm just when I, when I created this, it was who do you think? Who do you think is not going to make any moves? Who who do you think is going to stand pat and? Not do anything this week, and oh, based off of everything that I've seen, Detroit. I'm well, I mean, I yeah, I didn't even really think about Detroit, they haven't done anything. No, I was actually gonna agree with you guys and say it was gonna be Seattle. That's um, true, Detroit is Detroit hasn't done anything either. You know, Buffalo, at least I'm hearing rumors about certain players, but. If Stevie Eiserman is going to be quiet on the trade deadline. I don't think he stays quiet. I think he winds up. I think he winds up making a move or two because they need to make a move. No, they they've been they the last couple of games. I mean, they, they it's like they they peaked against the Rangers in that one game that they beat them last week, and uh, they've been getting slaughtered ever since. Uh, ever since. Yeah, they got smoked tonight, six to one. Yeah, they've been. God damn. They, have, they have not been playing well lately. Yeah, I think they're. I think they go after uh, defensive help too. So I wouldn't be surprised to see um, Gavrikov or Chikrin wind up in Detroit either. So keep an eye out for them and, and the running for those two. Ted saying Flyers or Canes. It's more the fly in terms of inactivity. The Canes have actually been trying to do some stuff. Yeah, Canes yeah. were in on Patrick Kane. Um, they're apparently in on Hayes. They got Puya Harvey. Um, I mean, I don't see them being like super active, but I think the Canes make another move, maybe two. They got to get some scoring punch. They um, really need scoring punch. Hmm. And they I mean, need somebody like to Aho. go. The real I like Aho. I like Sveshnikov. I mean, they have the scoring depth there. They just need to move a couple pieces there. I think it's sure up. Get get a spark going on that power play again, and I think Marty Natchez might be on the, on his way out. I think you might even see Jesper Foss on on his way out. Obviously, Aho's not going anywhere. Svetcher isn't going anywhere. Uh, Jordan Stahl's not going anywhere. Um, it's just a matter of who else is available. I mean, don't be surprised if maybe they start getting in the running for maybe Brock Besser. Not saying that. A, it would happen, but they could. Mm. They need to get stronger up the middle, too. You know what the shame of it is, though, is that the Hurricanes and Patrick Kane would have been great. The puns would have never stopped. It would have been fucking perfect. It's a shame. Nah, it shame it, it, well, it's more it perfect. Than what it is, was. you can't have everything in life. Sometimes <laughs> you can, though. <laughs> 
<laughs> Tarasenko, listen, guys. Tarasenko and Kane is a pretty, it's a pretty nice, uh, it's a pretty nice trade deadline uh, moves, don't you think? I mean, uh, you, you got to admit, pulled after, off. I'm not going to lie. You got to admit, nobody thought after they after they got Tarasenko that there was any way in the in in God's green earth that they could end up getting Kane too. Well, I was really surprised and taken aback when they got Tyler Motti. Um, not saying that he's like on that same level, but yeah, after Tarasenko, I thought they were out. I didn't think they were getting Kane at all. No, no, but I mean, I told you guys they were, it, they if they could find a team to take. Uh, to, to, to retain the other twenty five percent, they 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 might be able to do it. I just didn't know. I, I I thought that other team that he would relent and go to some other team because uh, everybody seemed to want him, but he he really wanted to play with Bart Panarin. So whatever, we'll take him. Yeah, he had a, he had career years with Panarin. <laughs> yes, he did. He did. I don't know if he can go over my so computer now. See here, we've got one. The most active teams that we've seen in this trade deadline for me, Toronto so far, or for me, Nashville's been very active in restocking up on draft picks and you know getting as much youth as. Mm -hmm. For me, it's 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 Toronto for sure. I mean, I thought after. I thought it, I had a similar mindset with Toronto that I did with, with the Rangers. And then after they made their splash, they were done. That was it. Ryan O'Reilly. All right. They're done. They're, they're done. They're going to make their push now. They went out today and they made three more moves. So for me, it's Toronto is the most active so far. And I'm not surprised by it, to be honest with you, one bit. No, they needed to do something. Mm-hmm. They couldn't go into the they couldn't go into the playoffs with the exact same roster they had last year. Three three uh, by the way. Boston just tied it. Power play goal. <laughs> no chance. No chance for Markstrom on that. It, in spite of getting outshot forty seven to thirteen, it's three to three. I mean, I say this all the time, Maddie. You can atone for this, man. It ain't, it ain't the number of shots. It's the number of quality shots. They can put up 45 bad quality shots and not score a damn thing. That's true. You know, I mean, Boston's being smart. You, know, you could shoot from the bad angle. It doesn't matter. Wow, that was some pass that uh, or Orloff mm -hmm. made. So, Orloff yeah. Made that pass. Yeah, it was to meet you, Orloff. He's got a three point night. Yeah, He's got he two goals made. and an assist. He just made a spectacular pass to that goal. Yeah, because uh, Jacob DeBrus took out. Two uh, Ted has a question that. for us, guys. Uh, he, uh, he says, "Question, fella, is it ruin the value of the trades you're trying to make?" No, no. I think he's very smart with the situation that the Flyers are in. Um, to sell some of these pieces off, uh, it doesn't. I don't think it ruins any value of anything as long as you're getting the proper value for that player back. So, example, say they trade Ivan Provorov. You know, a lot of people consider him a top two defenseman. I get really a first think he's a top four. If you can get, for me, for for a top four, if you can get three picks in return for that, I think that's fair value. If you can get like a first this year, a second this year, and maybe like a third next year, to me, to me, that's fair value for a guy like Ivan Provorov. Um, it's got to be, it's got to be market value for it, for it to be fair. Otherwise, I think it will diminish. If they're making a trade and make a trade, and they take whatever they're offered, so say they get a couple mid-level picks, four or five mid-level picks, I think that's undervalued. I think that ruins it. Um, but that's just me. I would think a first this year and a third next year would be right for Pro um, um, Hmm. Yeah, I think that's good value back. I would take that. It's 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 all about doing what you need to do to make your team better sooner than later. Right. 
You know, Tab was saying we need a half win film to seven on the worst record list. Um, Brad, did you give your most accurate headline? I'm sorry. What I, I could you repeat that? You cut out. Oh, sorry. Uh, did you give your most active team on the deadline? Yeah, it's Toronto, for sure. It's the most active. Toronto. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to be sure. Yeah, All think, right then. I think Toronto. So, I think Toronto's not done. I think there's one major move left for them. Um, I think there's one major major move for them left. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right, topic, and that is, of course, hot take of the week. I will kick it off to you, Brian, for the week. You'd think I'd be better prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It's all right. Improvise. You'll be okay. Um. I think the Flyers make a splash on Friday. I think they pull they pull an unexpected trade out from somebody. I'm not sure, but they they do manage to make a little bit of a splash on a younger talent, and they bring. I'm going to say a mid level prospect back to Philadelphia, around the I'd say around the age of 23. That's my hot take. All right. Not take Brad, what is yours? Okay, here's one that's out of left field, guys. The Los Angeles Kings, who have done absolutely nothing so far, are going to make a deal for a goalie come the playoffs. Hmm. Because let's let's be honest, their goaltending is not up to snuff right now. Yeah, I don't think that's out of left field. Jonathan Quick is more like Jonathan Slow right now. He, he's just not – he is not a uh, NHL-caliber goaltender anymore. And I think the Kings have a good young team, and if they can get themselves reasonable goaltending in the playoffs, they could, they could definitely be a factor. I mean, I could see it. But Felix Copley is having a really good year for them. Um, 17 wins, 4 losses, 2.74 goals against, and a 901 save percentage, which means he's probably not seeing, not, a, he's not seeing a lot not, of shots. 901 is not good, though. No, but he's not he's not seeing a lot of shots, and the shots that – he's giving up goals on those little bit of shots. But, I mean, his goals against aren't, aren't bad. I'm more concerned about his goals against than his save percentage. Because the save okay. percentage leans more on how many shots he's seeing. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, nine oh one is not good though. No, I mean, but again, he's probably not seeing a ton of shots. Yeah. Okay. That 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 could be. I think the king. I think I think the king. The kings haven't done anything at all. I think they're they're going to do something in the next couple of days. I think so too. I think they go after a defenseman. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, they could be the Jeff Chickering move. They could be. I I know they're they're linked to him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I haven't heard anything at all with re regarding the Kings uh, making a move, and I just can't believe that they wouldn't do anything. Well, they they pretty much had Chikrin that deal done about two weeks ago. Yep, I think they revisited, and then the deal deal fell through because they couldn't agree on the prospects. But I I do think they they make that I do think they make that move. I, I think, think that's Chikrin, where I think Chikrin goes there. Yeah, I think Chicken goes to L.A. I think I said this as my hot take a couple weeks ago. Chicken goes to L.A. And now, obviously, with Carlson not being in the mix, because I originally said Carlson was going to go to Ottawa, I think Vladislav Gabrikov goes to goes to Ottawa now. Okay, that sounds that sounds pretty reasonable. Matthew. Um. All right, so my hot take for the week, my hot take is that my hot take is that the 
<laughs> the Flyers will trade Sam Merson. And Tar will jump off the back when bread. <laughs> That's the last thing this fan base needs. God. You're going to trade the chosen one? Well, be honest with what happens. Oh, my God. Listen, I'm just saying, sometimes you need to, you know the old saying, you got to break it. So you gotta, you gotta. If you're gonna make an omelet, you gotta break some eggs. You just gotta, you gotta, gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Listen, That's what you gotta if, do sometimes. If then, <laughs> I agree with you. But here's the problem: if you trade Sam Urson, the bulk of this fan base who already thinks he's a starter over Carter Hart, you trade him. There's going to be a, a riot outside of the Wells Fargo Center. So I'm talking like old school pitchforks, torches. They are going to come. Some of them are probably going to have some nooses. They're going to go right after Chuck Fletcher if he ever trades Sam Merson. You, they would tear that building apart looking for him. <laughs> Don't you know he's? But I'm just saying, one? is that is that such a bad thing to want? Is that such a bad thing to see happen? Is that just the worst thing in the world? <laughs> just to watch the world burn just a little bit. <laughs> Yes, uh, cynical. <laughs> By the way, I think it's time to wrap this show up. I just started losing. The shots on goal now in that Calgary game, fifty-one to sixteen. I mean, and Olmark, did you see those three saves Olmark just made? Mm -hmm. He's keeping a minute. He, oh, he, yeah, he he gave. He gave the puck away. It's almost like he gave the puck away on purpose just so that he could make a few more saves. <laughs> Seriously, I want to call you Michael Caine right now, Matty. Like, Jesus. You sound like Alfred in the Batman movies. Some people just want to watch the over. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> I mean, I already know you're a cynical fan All right. Twitter, but Jesus. On that Christ. note... <laughs> On that note, I think it is a good time to wrap this sucker up. And if the Wells Fargo is still standing, I'm sure the Flyers will be able to make their broadcast. Although they won't be there next Tuesday. They'll actually be down in the Sunshine State to face off with the Tampa Bay Lightning. So that'll be next Tuesday. So obviously we'll have reactions for you to that. But you all the hockey news and updates along with it. By then, of course, the trade deadline will be over. We'll have a chance to on any other crazy or possible blockbuster trades that'll be made before. For everybody out there who chimed in on the fam, all the regulars and all the newcomers, we thank you all. Once again, you are the lifeblood of A2D Radio and of every single show that is here on this station thank you and we hope everybody out there has a pleasant weekend a safe weekend and enjoys themselves in whatever way they still then we are the hockey who buy our show sponsor specialized physical therapies go talk to your paul vidal he'll take care of you his team of experts whether they be in berlin or Cherry Hill, New Jersey, they'll take care of any and pains that you may have for you. Make an appointment at www.specializedphysicaltherapy.com. And um, we will see you guys on aradio.com. Until then, peace and love, everyone.